and there's over 20,000 square feet left for this lot. The, the lot to the rear is a non-building lot. Um, it'll be, it'll be uh, retained as a separate parcel of land, but will be uh, conveyed to the neighbor. Where it was registered land, uh, we had to go to land court. You submit, uh, you, you pre-file with them, to look at your calculations, your plans. They provide comments. They asked for a couple small changes that I, I made over the weekend. I forwarded copies to Jesse Wilson and to George Zamboris this morning. Um, very minor. They, I had submitted plans to two weeks ago prior, prior to this hearing. Um, it was minor changes. Again, er everything meets zoning. I show the house, the setbacks, frontage. We were in compliance with all the zoning requirements. Um, this plan is going into land court tomorrow. Um, there's a closing on this end. Okay. Originally, I wasn't sure if I was going to get this in time from land court, and we were going to try to figure out how to you could authorize maybe Gene to sign, or if you've ever done that in the past, there is a closing, but everything ended up working out okay, even though I work with <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have two mylars, which the town requires, and I have prints um, that I can provide. You know, hopefully, you can sign tonight. Yep. George, have you? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval as an ANR. Gene and Jesse? Um, changes from the version we saw, was it like layout changes, typo, type of things, or? What's strange, usually with registered land, when you find monuments on registered land, they usually check very well. In this case, there'd be a half a foot difference. Then you had to make a determination, do you hold the monument, do you hold the record deed distance? Um, it was very minor, so there'd be little changes that you wouldn't right. really even right. notice, but it, it did affect a little bit of the, the boundary. But it, it's a two and a half <coughs> acre piece of land that's not close to being undersized. Right. Concern? I don't. I don't believe that there should be. No. Okay. There's no appeal process going on. Well, that's. Uh, I mean, I have no problem with the yeah. subdivision. I just happen to be a, a close neighbor. <coughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Do you want the mile or do you want me to take it? I'll take it with me. Right. Jack, you have an extra paper copies for us for the office. Okay, great. And then they signed it. They signed the paper copy for you? Yes, we signed it. Okay, great. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, we did. Thank you very much. Okay, so next up on the agenda is going to be uh, Mariano Drive subdivision bond release and lot releases. And who's here representing? Hey, Al. Good. Um, Al Calia representing Mariano Drive. Right? I think uh, Jesse has the appropriate Form K that I filled out uh, and signed, notarized, and then the bank also did the same thing uh, using George's uh, approved estimate for the uh, cost to be posted for the amount of the bond, two hundred and sixty-two thousand five seventy-nine. So what we're doing here is we're approving the bond amount based on the town engineer's recommendation, uh, which is the form K of the credit card credit agreement. Yep. And I have a copy for you guys to sign, as well as um, he's <coughs> also requesting the release of lo all the lots, lots one, two, and three. And we have a copy of that for you guys to sign. Okay. George is here. He's um, he's been working with Al to establish the bond. Gotcha. George, anything? No, we, went through, uh, we went through all the work that's uh, been completed to date, what you're seeing up there is uh, all the work that's remaining. What we did not add is the um, cost of the pole removal and the cost of the new street lights because we called RMLD and they actually have already paid for that with RMLD, so it's just uh, once they're ready, they'll get it in. But uh, <coughs> that amount of two, in my memo, I had rounded up to 600, but uh, the actual number is two hundred dollars and ninety-seven. I mean, ninety cents is sufficient to complete the subdivision, which includes a uh, ten percent uh, contingency. Okay, great. Right. <coughs> Any questions? So, um, in your packets, there are actually, if you're ready for the for the vote, there's some draft votes. So we appreciate three votes on this. Um, one is a the last it's the bond amount, the tripart. Oh, okay. Tripartite agreement. Okay. Okay. Find that. In here somewhere. One thirteen. That's okay. Yeah. <coughs> yeah tri go. Tripartite is misspelled on the draft. Okay. All right. You ready? Want to have a motion? Okay. Uh, move that the CPDC approve the uh, bond amount for the Mariano Drive subdivision. Amount of $262,579.90 as recommended by the town engineer. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> Move that the CPDC approve the tripartite ag agreement, Form K, as surety for the satisfactory completion of the subdivision known as Mariano Drive. Second. All those in favor? Move that the CPDC release <coughs> lots one, two, and three uh, at Mariano Drive from the restrictive covenants of the covenant agreement between Evergreen Real Estate Trust and the CPDC. Second. All those in favor? Um. 
Shoot. So we have these two to sign. Correct. All right. Next up on the agenda, um, minor site plan review for 190 Haven Street, the proposed subway restaurant. And who's here representing this hey, application? That's uh, Raleigh Barchin on the uh, contractor. Requesting permission to put a restaurant with takeout at 190 Haven Street. Jesse, right regarding uh, trash removal that we went over with the landlord. So in we your we found a spot to put a two-yard dumpster in the back. What page is this in our? This is eighty-seven, eighty-three. Yes. Eighty. <laughs> it starts on page 83. All right. Is it the same as the uh, mail pack? Um, 83 in the dust packet. Oh, were there, uh, the question was whether there are any changes between what we oh. got in the mail? <coughs> no. Okay. Sorry. There's no changes. That was the question, right? Yep. So there was an email sent on November 26th by, by Jesse, and has a response been received to that? There's no written responses. I believe the applicant pr probably addressed most of the items yeah. um, here. The biggest um, thing that we were working out with the applicant and the um, landlord was the issue of trash, just because that is sort of a landlord um, item because of where it's located in the back of the space. Um, so we worked that out. I'll let them speak to that, but um, okay. but we did not receive formal written comments. Okay. So, so do we, can we go through those now? Sure. All right. Um, so the first question is, uh, and are you comfortable with that? Are you prepared to answer these questions? I have the question. I'll okay. <laughs> 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 just want to make sure you've seen the email. Are there any additional rooftop mechanical units that are required as part of this fit out? No. No. Okay. Um, the next one is around trash removal, so let's skip over that. Uh, deliveries. What is the proposed delivery schedule for the site? Twice a week. Okay. Any idea on what time? Uh, typically before 11. Okay. In and there, there's a door in the back of that unit. Is that the case? So you get deliveries from they'll, that? They'll be from the back, yes. <clears throat> what kind of um, trucks are usually used for those? Usually straight trucks, like 20-foot box trucks. Okay. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I mean, the, you probably know that the... Um, tractor trailer basically can't get into that parking lot right okay yeah. well I guess that would be uh, something for Cisco who's the uh, vendor that they'll have to right. work on that how to get the deliveries on site to be able to get out of there um, the next question what is the plan for employee parking so, so they, yeah, they were going to get uh, four employee parking permits. All the paperwork has been filled out, and we were just 
basically waiting on uh, after this meeting to move forward. Okay. Okay. Yeah, are those just in the back lot? What's that? Well, it's, are those, it's, it's, how they, does that work? They, it, they cover all of the uh, two hour limit parking in the downtown area, I believe. I'm, I'm not clear if, it's, if you're saying that they're the hang tag parking <coughs> or the reserve so parking. So this is what we got, yeah, hang tag parking. The blue zone. The blue zone, right. The yep. And those are, those, those are, are the reserve ones. spaces. Those are. Just first come, first serve. Yep. And they can be passed between employees, correct? Yep. Right. Okay. <coughs> the next question is, what is the plan for signage? So master, plan is set, uh, master signage plan has been approved, but anything you put up has to conform to that? Correct. So uh, once again, the sign company has already been contacted. Fast sign. Fast sign has been contacted. They're a uh, subway approved sign company. Okay. They know they need to conform to you know, the town's... Uh, yeah, they're familiar with us. Okay. And then... That's it for the questions. Just a couple of comments. Window signs are allowed without a permit, but they must meet all the requirements contained within the wedding zone, zoning bylaw. Um, oh, actually, there was a question. Does, does Subway intend to place any signs in the window? Just an open sign. Oh, okay. Is that an sign? Yes, it is illuminated. We do not permit flashing open signs. So the settings that you needed to be on is just stationary. Yeah, they're, they're just, yeah, stationary. Yep. Um, do you know if you guys will be utilizing both the wall sign and a blade sign? You are allowed both under the master signage plan. They're actually, they're actually doing measurement tonight. Okay. Plus they actually went by the building because they didn't have the actual spec because I'm too short to reach the top. <laughs> so they had to go out and measure it so they can fit it to the city and to Subway's standard. Okay. And that is a separate application. You'll just need to file with the building department. I can help you with that if you need to. <coughs> and um, temporary banner, which are allowed um, by issuance of a permit. Just want to make you aware of that if you do intend to do that. Yeah, it would only be with now hiring and grand opening, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And then the last one, which uh, is important, the Board of Health will require a full plan review separate from this review in accordance with uh, with their regulations. Yep. So. Ready to submit once we get to the plan. Okay. Good. Have you taken a look at the plan review packet? It's all filled out. Okay, great. Great. Because I it's pretty lengthy. Great. John or Dave, any other? No, I think um, generally we covered the the types of issues that they would have come up against mm -hmm. in the in the um, <coughs> in the building right with the building design um, and since there's no parking issues <coughs> related because it's near the public mm -hmm. parking um, lot then I'm good Pretty straightforward yep. yeah yeah I'll take a look at the, uh, the decision the draft decision is on page 84 So quickly, going back to the trash, the, you have a two-yard dumpster. Two-yard um, dumpster. We, we're going to go, uh, we need to have a modification for the building for the trash plan. Is that's, is, that's next, but that's the, mm -hmm. this is all, it's yes. all consistent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just. And so, just to confirm, it will be emptied once a week. Uh, actually, yeah. I said twice. Tw I think we got twice yeah. a week. <coughs> At least once, once a week. Once a yes. Week. Yeah. Once a week for now until they really get a hold on how much trash they're uh, creating. Did you take a look at the draft decision that I sent you this afternoon? Yes. Okay, great. So, did you see the condition regarding the Board of Health or the health staff? We wanted to make sure that, it, you know, similarly to how you're going to evaluate your future trash needs, so should the health staff determine additional pickups are required, they wanted to make sure that that was held as a condition here. Right. Okay. I'm good. 
<clears throat> move that the CPDC approve the minor site plan review decision for the uh, proposed Subway restaurant at 190 Haven Street. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> You're in. You're You're right. Right. So what will happen is I'll, I'll finalize the decision. You'll get a signed copy. And after all that's um, taken care of, you'll just want to make sure you um, address the items prior to construction. We'll hold a pre-construction meeting and then you'll be able to get your building permit. And I can go over th with that okay. and over the next couple days. Is there any appeal period that we got to wait for? Or we pretty much You're good, good to go. Good to go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the next up is on page 92. Hold on a step. Jump the gun again. All right. So next up on the agenda, minor modification to site plan review. 600 to 622 Main Street, MF Charles Building Landscape Plan, and the update <coughs> to the trash plan. Good evening, folks. How are you? Good. Uh, the record attorney is John Rear, law firm of Mon and Mon, 275 Michigan Road, Woburn, mm -hmm. uh, appearing for you on behalf of the owner of Haven Property LLC. Um, before you uh, this evening, to request minor modifications to the board's site plan decision of April 2nd, 2012, uh, regarding the, my client's renovation of the MF Charles Building. Uh, we're requesting uh, waivers relative to the landscape on the property. The first is installation of the planter on the patio next to the um, Fun Valley Tavern. Uh, the area really is sufficiently landscaped as it is, um, as with everything else that's been installed. And then the second is uh, an installation of a birch tree on the family dental side of the courtyard. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, very minor modifications. I'm sure you've all been by. Looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, these, are, these are again pretty minor deviations from the approved plan. We want to make sure we formalize it and request sure. the appropriate. So, do we have to do two votes tonight for Sean? Um, I think with the trash plan, did we want to just continue to update the board? I don't yes. think that's actually. Oh, okay. A modification. Yeah, there's no actual condition of the decision regarding updates to the trash plan. We can do this just to kind of keep on top of it with the, with the town. Yeah. Um, okay. you know, as new tenants are added, we continually update it, but we're certainly in compliance <coughs> with the trash removal. Perfect. Condition. Love it. Great. Right. But for the landscape plan, that's kind of an amendment, right? That's yes. a minor mod. So, yep. Okay, so we'll vote on that. Mm -hmm. So I believe you guys normally do two, determine it's minor, and then approve right. the minor. Yep. Or not. Approve. Move that the CPDC determine that the proposed modification to the landscape plan for 612 Main Street, MF Charles Building, is in fact a minor modification. Second. All those in favor? Before, I just do want to mention, I think, uh, um, um, I do agree that it looks great and that um, from a landscaping perspective, it's all good. Um, I'm, I am a little bit disappointed about the sort of the not, I'm not going to say removal because it wasn't there, but the removal from the plan, I guess, of the, of the um, I, I'm going to call it a little s outdoor seating um, uh, as a secondary function. So I would encourage your client to um, consider that in the future. I don't know if it was really a money thing or if it was a space or, or what have you, but um, I think that that um, would have added a little bit more to that little space, which I think is a great downtown urban space, but for the function of what you all are doing, the the landscaping and all, I think, you know, it's just a, a would have been another added bonus, I think, so not a requirement. You guys did a great job on the building, so. Okay. Move that <coughs> the CPDC approve the minor modification proposed for 612 Main Street, MF Charles Building. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> All right. Thank you very much. Sure. Yeah, let's talk about the trash. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, the, uh, my client, myself, uh, Gene, Jesse, and we all had an opportunity to sit down a couple of weeks ago to do the changes that were going to be necessary. To Plan, um, most significantly to accommodate the addition of one of the, the, the subway retail tenant on the first floor. 
Uh, we did submit a revised trash removal plan. The original one was dated April 28th. Uh, the revised one is dated December 3rd. Uh, really just kind of clarifies um, so some of the uh, changes really to accommodate uh, some extra recycling and uh, the inclusion of the uh, supplement. So we also updated the sketch plan, which was dated the day after 12-4, uh, which is, depicts the actual locations of each of the um, dumpsters in the service yard. I think if you recall the last plan, we had numbered locations to show what the maximum we could do. <coughs> we have enough in there now that we can <coughs> We continue, to, yeah, maybe continue mm -hmm. to update it every time we, we add a new tenant, but um, obviously this is the last, it's the last retail space, so, yeah, this is the last retail space, so we are adding, we are putting them in a particular location, adding some labels so everybody makes sure they have the same one. Um, the provisions are pretty tough to explain. Yeah. Is it, um, is this in your tenants' leases? I mean, about the specific locations and all that? Just curious. This revised one, December 3rd, uh, is not, but it is an attachment. So they are aware of the <coughs> trash removal plan. They are all aware of the requirement to you know, comply with it. Okay. <coughs> the uh, corrugated cardboard is a shared. Both of the recycling uh, dumpsters are shared. Okay, good. So originally, were you going to have the dumpsters in the middle of that larger area? We showed, uh, we did show them in the middle of that large area. If you remember, I think uh, one iteration of it, we had two rows of smaller dumpsters, and I think we had one row of larger dumpsters. Mm -hmm. um, we don't need to utilize that area as it stands now, um, so that's why they're, they're not currently <coughs> dumpsters located in that middle area. Good. Yeah, this is better. Right. I think that plan was to show what could be accommodated. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. So. I mean, it seems to be working fine. We have um, two companies right now. The overall seems to be working very well. Good. Okay. Good for me. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, folks. Thanks, 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 Well, are we going to do the town charter? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we so we did, so we've done the minor, minor Mariano, so now it's the charter. Okay. I know I have comments. All right, so. Page 128 of your desk. Okay. Next up on the agenda is uh, the Town of Reading Charter Update, review proposed draft charter and provide feedback for January Town Meeting. So Gene or Jesse, is this something you want to um, kick I off? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is the section that talks about <coughs> the planning development commission. Mm -hmm. changes are it's mostly some rewarding I don't think there's anything that impacts the content right there's a little bit of reordering to mm -hmm. to correct the, uh, the emphasis mm -hmm. there was also the town manager wanted to point out on page 130 of your desk packets they are now clarifying the associate membership as before, it wasn't really clear. Um, so this will apply to all boards or committees. Oh, okay. Sense. 
180 We're missing days. Where's that? Oh, oh I, I see. Yep. yep. So, <laughs> um, so in the in this associate membership um, information, it talks about the. F um, that you're supposed to follow the associate members are supposed to follow the rules and regulations um, as identified in the charter about the about the specific board. But then when we go to the CBDC definition of uh, or the definition of the CBDC in in here, it says nothing about associate uh, members. So either we need to add something that they're aren't associate members or something about associate members to because right now it's not clear uh, Do, yeah we should in the the first basically paragraph of but there's nothing there 4.5 <coughs> where it's describing the composition of the board or the commission it should probably say something like consisting of five members appointed by the board of selectmen for three year terms etc uh, up to Pick a number three associate members may also be uh, appointed by the board of selectmen. There we go. Something like some structure like that. Does that get what, is she, what you're um, saying, John? Yeah. I think I wasn't intimately involved in this, but I think the bylaw. Is where the zoning bylaw is where um, we wanted to talk about associate members. Because I think what it's saying is it's specified in the charter, town bylaw, or mass general law. Um, so, I, well, I know that right now we have um, associate members. Um, there is, um, they can't vote. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we were. Um, we could have up to two, I thought. There's actually nothing in the charter that, yeah, that speaks it, to right, associate members. Right, right. But the, um, what is there in the town bylaw? Because that's the general bylaw. No, there isn't anything. The, there was some place, I think, was it in, the, in zoning where they said they could have two, but it, because it wasn't in the charter, then it meant that they Remember weren't we real. Yes, that. we did yeah, talk about we that. We talked about that. And that um, and, and I guess all I'm saying is this what does not clear this does not clear that up. Right? Or uh, or I'm missing something. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, it's I agree. Let me take I don't a look see at anything the in the current previous file? version. <laughs> Unless no. it was a rule that they had adopted. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think it was something that just kind of developed. In the true sense, um, I don't think there, there are associate members. Yeah. Yep. Don't tell George that. <laughs> <laughs> He's right there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Other than that, so are we suggesting point. that? I mean, do we? Are we saying we want to spell that out? Yeah, you can make a recommendation that that be included. Yeah. Um, well, we, <coughs> what we want is we would like to have it spelled out in the appropriate uh, document. That may or may not be the charter. Yeah. Yes. But we want the uh, we want to be empowered to have associate members. Okay. Because if it's not, I, we don't want to make this inconsistent with everything else. Mm -hmm. So if it's spelled out in bylaws and other places, then. We should include that in the by in in our bylaw, um, and, and I, I just I don't know enough about in the what past else is we've happening. Had two, um, two members. We've, we've at least had one. We've had it. <laughs> I, know. I think yes. we've had. We've had at least two because yeah. that's how I got on the board. Okay. It was me right. and George. <laughs> and I would think that's probably sufficient, to yeah. 
<coughs> do we need to do anything with this? Um, I think, did, did Bob want a, a vote? I think he wanted a recommendation. I, I suppose it would be a bad thing to take a vote. Mm, sure. Possibly with that recommendation. I mean, I don't know if any of you had a chance to review the whole thing, but you, you, you know, any anything is fair game. But obviously, these are relevant to this board, so. Mm -hmm. um, recommend that the uh, remove that the CPDC. Um, approve. Endorse. 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 Yeah. There's, there's the right word. Move that the CPDC endorse the proposed changes to the Charter of the Town of Reading uh, sections applicable to the Community Planning and Development Commission with okay. the uh, recommendation that uh, a provision be made for associate members uh, in, in the appropriate um, document. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. All right. Good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> As we go along. So who wants to read the public comments? I'll do it. Yeah. All right. Okay, next up on the agenda, public hearing for site plan review 186 to 190 Summer Avenue proposed criterion child enrichment. So we'll have John start with the public notice. Uh, notice is hereby given under section 4.3.3 of the Reading Zoning Bylaw. The Community Planning and Development Commission will hold a public hearing on Monday, December 8th, 2014 at 730 in the uh, Silicon's meeting room at Reading Town Hall. And to hear the site plan review application from John Littleton Jr., President of Criterion Child Development, uh, for the property located at 186 Summer Ave, Assessor's Map 15, Lot 294, 295, and 296. The applicant is proposing renovation of the existing historic home and construction of a new 5,620 square foot addition for use by Criterion Child Enrichment. The project will also include construction of a 39-space parking lot, <coughs> playground area, installation of new walkways, lighting, and landscaping. A copy of the application and associated plans are available at, to the public at Community Services Department in Town Hall. Great. Thank you. All right. So um, before we begin, let's just talk about uh, the schedule and how we'll organize this uh, discussion. So we're going to start with two 15-minute presentations. Uh, we'll have the applicant's representative go first. And then we'll have a presentation from the 01867 Neighborhood Preservation Group. Um, the CPDC will then discuss um, or ask any questions we might have, discuss the topic. We'll have the planning staff um, ask any questions they may have. We've got the town engineer here. Give him an opportunity to ask his questions. And then we will open it up to uh, the public for comments and questions. So uh, just kind of rules of the road for, for that portion of our show. The first thing is if you haven't signed in and gotten a number, please see Kim in the back and sign in and she'll give you a number. Um, this will assist us with the preparations of the minutes so we know who's speaking and the topics that you're speaking about. Um, unless you have a number, you will not be recognized to speak, so please, again, ensure you have one. Uh, and if you wish to speak, please hold up your number so I can call on you. Um, you will, will not be allowed to speak without my permission, so everyone needs to remain silent. Um, I will do my best to honor those that have not yet spoken over those that are, have already spoken. Um, this one's important. Um, we will not entertain discussion as to whether or not Criterion's proposed use is protected under the Dover Amendment. Uh, Town Council has advised the CPDC that the, that the Dover Amendment applies. Um, we will also not entertain discussion regarding the historical significance of the property or whether preservation efforts beyond what has been proposed are needed. These matters may be raised, if at all, before the Historic District Committee in an appropriate proceeding. Um, so we're pretty much limited to the following matters, which may be properly regulated under the, Don uh, the Dover Amendment. Uh, the bulk and height of structures, 
Yard sizes, lot area, setbacks, open space, parking, and building coverage requirements. Um, so please make sure your comments relate to one or more of these matters. Um, any other discussion may be ruled out of order. Um, the only exception to those, I think we said seven items, uh, are three matters that the applicant has voluntarily included in its application. Uh, lighting, hours of operation, and landscaping. The chair, I will allow comments on these two topics, even though the CP CPDC's authority in the absence of the applicant's agreement is limited. Um, and obviously, speakers are asked to be respectful of one another and um, please refrain from personal attacks. So with that, oh. Uh, you're using numbers by you asking people to identify themselves? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Okay. Sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, who's representing the applicant? Please. My name is Ken Margolin, and I'm an attorney with offices of 246 Walnut Street in uh, Newton. And I'm here with John Fernandez, who's an attorney from Milton, and we're representing the applicant. Uh, most of this presentation is going to be from uh, Mike Maxwell, a project architect. And Jack Sullivan, the North Coast project engineer. So I'm going to be extremely brief. Uh, the, you received a letter, I think, from the neighbor's attorney. I received it uh, late this afternoon. My understanding, this as to the scope of the hearing, and my understanding is that town council has submitted a confidential memorandum which led you to your, your um, setting forth the scope. And if, if I'm correct in that understanding, I don't really need to spend much of your time responding to uh, Attorney Krieger's letter. I just want to respond very briefly. Uh, uh, I got that letter late this afternoon, so I didn't issue a response. Um, your recitation of the scope of, of this board's authority under the Dole Amendment was exactly correct. Uh, Mr. Krieger suggested that we should have the usual scope of a, of a CPDC hearing, uh, notwithstanding the Dover Amendment. I know we're not here, you're not a court, and you have your town council's memorandum, but the case law that, that was cited in Mr. Krieger's letter, mis I'm not saying this was intentionally misleading you, but it mischaracterized the law. I just want to take about a minute and then turn it over to read some of the case quotes that tell you that you are exactly right in the limited scope of the, the hearing that you described. Uh, in, in the lead case that, that Mr. Krieger cited, which was the uh, uh, Tufts University, uh, the Tufts College case versus Town of Medford, it's a, a very important Dolberman case. The holding of the court that was not in the letter was as follows. Uh, the Supreme Judicial Court said that the land court, the lower court, uh, properly declared invalid the site plan and special permit requirements of the <coughs> ordinance to present and future unspecified projects on the Tufts campus. There is an appeals court case which says very explicitly, and it's a case called the uh, Bay Farm Montessori Academy versus Town of Duxbury, and the appeals court said that, uh, we talked about a 1979 <coughs> case, Bible Speaks versus Town of Lennox, which held that site plan review could not even be imposed on a Dover Amendment project. In the appeals court in 2009, uh, said that there we quashed the bylaw that required site plan review for educational uses. And the court went on to explain that under the Dover Amendment, site plan review was not a, a proper procedure in which to uh, determine the scope of, of, a, of a Dover Amendment's project. And, and lastly, uh, the, the land court, and there are many, many cases, by the way, I'm just giving you a flavor. Land Court in a case called Teddy Burke Beer Club uh, versus City of Newton in 2004 said it very explicitly. Uh, it is clear that zoning ordinances cannot impose site plan requirements on Dover Amendment cases. The, the most extreme uh, holding I have ever seen uh, came from the Federal District Court in the uh, case of uh, South uh, Middlesex Opportunity Council versus Town of Framingham, in which the federal judge said just what you said tonight, that the most that a town could do in a site plan review process for the Dover Amendment project was to determine, uh, to discuss those seven criteria uh, which you read, which are the criteria which can be reasonably regulated under the Dover Amendment. Uh, so I, want, I wanted to make sure I gave that response. Uh, you got it exactly right. And all I would ask Mr. Hanson is that we stick to those uh, criteria and the three, which as you suggested, 
uh, uh, criteria and degrees that they have discussed. And now I want to turn it over to the people who are really doing the presentation, Jack Sullivan and the back master. Thank you. Thank you for the record. My name is Jack Sullivan. I'm owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group. And you just find my existing conditions plan. And I can start with that. brief in my overview. I'm, I'm the surveyor and engineer for this project. Uh, this project, as we all know, is at 186-190 Summer Avenue. It consists of three parcels of land under common ownership. Um, it's improved with an existing historic home. There's a barn located here. The proposal is to demolish this rear portion of the, of the house, and that's where the addition will be proposed. Um, what's important to note, and um, I should note to CPDC, that we did have a DRT meeting on this project. Um, there's, a, there's an existing curb cut that services the existing driveway to the house here, and there's also a curb cut over in this section. There's two curb cuts for this property. Um, as you can see, an effort was made to locate um, trees over eight inches in diameter to the rear of the project, and um, you can see the existing tree line for this project. The majority of, of this yard is grass, and there's some large trees here that offer a buffer to the, this abutter on the right-hand side. You can go to the next slide. This is the proposed site plan. You see we're retaining the, the front section of the home. This is where the additions being proposed here. The barn will be retained. This is just for storage purposes for the facility. Um, as I noted in my introduction, there are two curb cuts. Um, when we went to DRT, we originally were going to utilize the two curb cuts and have a different style entrance to the site. Um, it was suggested at DRT that we look to try to limit the curb cuts. So we're basically going to have one uh, center curb cut. The other two existing curb cuts will be closed. Um, it's a 24 foot wide entrance. Um, there's, um, as stated, 39 parking spaces. Four of them will be um, handicapped accessible spaces. Two are van spaces, two are conventional handicap spaces. Uh, previously, we had the handicap spots um, all in one area. Um, at the DRT meeting, just scroll out a little bit on that. At the DRT meeting, it was suggested that we try to balance the handicapped access points uh, to the main <coughs> building and to, to where the classrooms would be. So we did that with this plan. Um, at the building side, we're required for ADA reasons to have a, a handicapped accessible ramp constructed to service that portion of the building. This section, we're able to come in uh, straight into the classroom. There'll, there'll be railing. It's all ADA compliant. Uh, we'll be utilizing vertical granite curbing um, throughout this throughout this site, and there'll be concrete uh, walkways throughout the project. There's a playground area <coughs> to the rear of the of the storage barn. Um, the majority of the parking for visitors and um, um, for the families coming into the facility will be will be in the main section, the throat section of this area. <coughs> the parking spaces to the rear are going to be employee only parking spaces. We have the sidewalks, we provided crosswalks, so um, there's easy access to, to get to the buildings from those locations. To the rear, where I'm pointing here, we're going to have a dumpster and recycling um, area that will be uh, fully fenced. And in the landscaping uh, scenario, we show screening. We showed s snow storage to the rear of the project. Um, these hatched areas here will be where we're looking to pile snow and along the side here. Um, an effort's really been made to try to retain as, as many of the trees as we can in the, in the rear. Um, you can go to the next slide. This is my grading plan. Um, what I wanted to do for this type of site is um, anytime you're doing any type of site development, you have to look at drainage. Um, and, and you want to show that there's going to be less uh, peak rates of runoff and volume of runoff in, in the constructed condition versus the existing condition. 
What I want to do in this case, I'm, I'm using uh, porous pavement. It allows water to move through the pavement and there's a, a two foot layer of crushed stone uh, beneath the pavement. There was soil testing done and witnessed uh, by the Town of Reading Engineering Department. Um, sandy soils uh, really promote infiltration rates. And what I didn't want to do is, um, we're, I didn't want to put any sort of detention basin or an open type basin on, on this type of facility. I didn't want to put a large amount of drainage infrastructure. I didn't want a large amount of catch basins and manholes as you see in like maybe a stop and shop parking lot or, or something like that. So with the porous pavement, uh, there, there will be no structures. There's no need for basins. Um, I, I did submit a detailed drainage report to the town engineer, George Zamboris. He did have some comments in his review memo and I actually talked to him today on it. In, 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 the, in, in the comments he's made, I'll be able to address. Um, basically, it's, it's mostly engineering lingo, but um, in, in theory, he's on board with the porous pavement. He just wanted, he had a concern with porous pavement. Um, you need to submit an, uh, a maintenance plan for the porous pavement, which I will be doing. Now, you, can, you cannot sand a parking lot with porous pavement. If you do, you can't sweep it out, you'd have to vacuum. Vacuum, it's called vacuum sweeping to, to remove it. So in the case over time, if this started to fail, he asked for uh, two inlets, uh, like gutter inlets to be provided so that water could then move right into the, into the crushed stone area, which, which, which is a good suggestion and I agree with George. It's inexpensive, but it serves a purpose. If, and it would also allow, if they ever did have to come out and vacuum clean the pavement, it would, it, um, with that safety measure in place with, with the gutter inlets, um, water could move in and still allow someone to come in and perform that operation without jeopardizing any of the stormwater impact on site. Um, so this is basically a grading plan. Uh, the majority of the stormwater runs from the back of sidewalk to the back of the site. Um, everything will be contained in the curb line and as I stated, um, and, and even the, in the roof gutters, from, from the proposed addition, the existing house will be piped into that crushed stone sub base. Um, this, this site will have, um, it will have fire protection. We're proposing a four inch water main be brought into the site. Off of that four inch main, there'll be a fire protection line um, and there'll also be a domestic water line. A new six inch uh, PVC sewer service will be extended from the sewer main in Summer Ave to the facility and the site will also be serviced by um, gas. You can go to the next slide, Joel. <coughs> These are just my detail sheets. Um, they show how the, the, the recycling dumpster in the trash dumpster will be set up on a concrete pad with the fenced enclosure and then just some general engineering um, style um, details showing how the handicap ramps will be constructed, crosswalks, how the vertical granite curbing will be placed, uh, water main connections, and some of the handicap signage that you'll see were required under the ADA uh, rules to, to mark the handicap spaces and also provide a posted sign for each spot. I know this was a brief overview. Obviously, if questions come up, I'll gladly get back up in, in front of any of the abutters or uh, the board and try to answer them the best I can. And I'll turn it over to Mark Maxwell to talk about the architectural component of the project. Try to keep it under five minutes. Okay, I will. Um, Mark Maxwell, um, Maxwell Architects, architect for Criterion Child Enrichment. <coughs> you go, um, I don't know if you got the sing if you loaded up the single plan that we sent um, this afternoon. Um, yes, the annotated plan. This is the only change we uh, did. Both. Uh, try to respect the DRT comments and then the comments that we got from the various departments and we're in agreement with most of the things that we're asked and can have answered those in a written form. We have to answer any of those questions that weren't clear. The only thing we've added to the site plan is that um, after we met with abutters, um, we can extend a six foot stockade fence along a, much of the south perimeter um, so that to protect the temple uh, street abutters as well as the abutter directly to the south from the parking lot and headlights that might occur. There isn't a lot of evening use of this facility, but when you get to this time of year, people do turn their headlights on. Uh, so there are very few other changes. We didn't make any substantial 
uh, changes to the rest of the plan. If you go to the regular plans and just go all the way up to the first slide. I'm sorry, <coughs> wherever the, uh, uh, they're in a different order here. Uh, the uh, rendering, which is probably the fifth one down. It actually, you can just leave it here for the moment, which is, this is the, the main historic structure, and we've left that intact. What we've removed is the breezeway and shed building that are behind it, and clearly a, a different construction. Uh, there is a, about a 12-foot connector between the two buildings, and then our new school addition. The concept of the school addition was, although it, it will sit behind the historic house, it's tucked back as far as we could while respecting the dimensional requirements of the zoning. Uh, the gable ends, in referencing back to the gable end of the, uh, of the historic house, uh, and the existing house is about uh, 90 feet long with the shed, and our addition is 68 feet by 40 feet. The barn we will be stabilizing and ultimately using for educational storage, no active use in that, in that building. Uh, the treatment of the facility itself, of the new building, is to respect the materials and the, uh, the design and the detailing of the historic house, although it will be done in modern materials. And the two buildings will be connected and on level with each other. The first floor on level and the second floor will adjust the uh, slight variation in the uh, connector. We can warp that floor and essentially make up the floor difference. Part of that was to try to keep the ridge line of the addition down lower than the ridge line of the main house. Um, there, there are many things we can talk about, but I'd rather answer your questions if any of our responses to the questions that we got from the planning department weren't clear. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Number 12. <laughs> got that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Art Krieger from Anderson and Krieger, representing the 967 in the Preservation. Um, I'm going to speak from here if that's okay, because I have a surface to work on, because uh, I'm not going to be using the slides. Um, I represent uh, a large group of neighbors, including many of the voters and close neighbors, uh, many of whom are in this room tonight. Uh, some of them will speak for themselves. Uh, as I discussed with town council before, I'm making an organized presentation, I hope it's organized, that uh, help avoids the need for many people to speak, but I think four, uh, four neighbors would like to speak when it comes to the public comment section and then whoever else has moved to speak based on what's going on by then. So I'll just reserve the right to do that for now. Um, I guess I need to start on the scope of the hearing because uh, I was accused of misrepresenting the law. Um, uh, I don't believe I did so. The law is not as settled as, uh, as has been uh, presented to you. I understand town council has opined that uh, this facility would be an educational use, and as I said in the letter that I sent in today, uh, we accept that for purposes of this hearing. We're not, we're not challenging that. Um, I didn't know that Town Council had given you a confidential memo on, uh, on the scope of the hearing. Uh, I'm not sure there's much dispute about the scope since you included lighting and landscaping on the list. Um, but for the record, the case law is not as clear, again, as has been presented. There are cases, uh, uh, there's actually very little authority uh, on the scope of the uh, permissible topics under the Dover Amendment, and the case law on whether site plan of view can be applied uh, actually is mixed. Most of the cases go in the direction the criterion has urged, but the appeals court at least twice has indicated that site plan approval can be applied to Dover Amendment institutions. So on all these issues, including the education use itself, it, it is not as clear. As I said, we may not have to argue the point further if we can address the, uh, the issues, that, all the issues that you listed. Um, Ideally, from your point of view, and perhaps from the party's point of view, uh, you would apply the site plan criteria uh, rigorously enough that you protect the neighborhood and mitigate the impacts of this project on the neighbors without impairing the program, which is, of course, what you, what you may not do under the Dover Amendment. Uh, because otherwise, these issues from some town and some project are going to wind up at the SJC. Uh, I, I trust that Redding doesn't want to be the town necessarily to, to be there. So we hope that we're able to work out, work this out in site plan uh, terms. The, um, there are staff comments that I understand will be dealt with uh, involving uh, engineering issues, drainage, 
uh, the pavement issues. We heard something about the grant about those issues tonight. Snow storage. Um, as far as I knew from town council, and as far as I understand from the tendency of the staff comments, uh, this hearing will not be able to be closed tonight. There are going to be some outstanding issues. I suppose we'll make that judgment later, but that's my understanding. Um, I did submit a letter uh, on the scope of the hearing. Uh, I won't go through it, but I think I think you do have it uh, in your packet, whether you've read it or not. Uh, yet, I'm not sure. Um, the basic point is this, because I want, I want to get away from the scope issues and turn to the applicable standards. Uh, the zoning bylaw has 10 criteria for site plan approval. Um, it seems to me all of them are, are in bounds as you define the boundaries. Uh, I'm going to talk about six of them that I mentioned in my letter. There's minimizing the number of removed trees that are six inch caliper or larger. Um, in the rear parking lot, if you recall that uh, transverse portion of the parking lot at the back, 19 trees are being removed there alone. Uh, another five trees either for the building or for the driveway to the rear parking lot. Uh, 19 trees of that size. Uh, the, uh, the next section uh, in the criteria talks about minimizing visual intrusion by controlling the visibility of parking from residences through the, by landscaping and fencing. Minimizing glare from headlights, we heard about one mitigation measure for that already. Um, minimizing unreasonable departure from the uh, character size scale materials of buildings in the vicinity. Some of that may be beyond uh, the overman, but it's all related. Uh, and it all relates to the, uh, to the actual build out of this project. Maximizing property enhancements for landscaping and minimizing impacts to adjacent properties through auto operation noise, et cetera. Uh, those are all important. Individ each of them and collectively certainly, those are important for protection of the neighborhood. And so the neighbor's hope, the neighbor's request, is that this board apply them rigorously to minimize the impacts that the bylaw directs to be minimized uh, and to avoid the impacts that the bylaw is trying to avoid. Uh, we don't have detailed proposals yet, of course. We're not, we're not trying to design the project. Uh, but most of these criteria can be addressed with only a few measures. Um, parking is the key. Uh, the number of parking spaces. According to the application and the bylaw parking formula, 21 spaces would be required. Uh, I believe 39 are provided, although I haven't counted on the plans. I think I saw that number. I don't know if that can be confirmed. Um, the question is why so many? And parking drives much of the impact because it drives the tree, uh, the tree removal. It drives the decreased setbacks to the neighbors of the parking fields. Uh, it drives a lot of the visual and character uh, impacts. Um, and so I would hope that there would be a question from the board or some discussion of why 39 spaces are needed. Um, because the bylaw is intended to accommodate not only all the students, but, the, but the, the staff, the number of staff on the largest shift. So the question is why for the program do they need so many almost double the number of spaces? Um, if parking can be reduced, as I said, it solves a number of other problems. Um, the one issue that you didn't include in the scope, I want to mention it, uh, if only to reserve rights on it, is signage. It seems to me that that's, that shouldn't be a matter of major dispute because signs can't really impair the, the program. Moving a sign, training a sign, making more compatible materials isn't going to affect the Dover Amendment use. Uh, but we would hope that the, that the signs can be appropriately moved or sized to be consistent with the residential neighborhood. No one's contesting for purposes of this hearing that they can have this, this use. But it's, it's your job, I submit, to make the use look as much residential as possible. Just because it is the facility that it is doesn't mean it has to look like it's a, a, a different kind of facility, a uh, different kind of use that is going on in the neighborhood. I'm not saying you have to pretend it's a house. It's obviously larger than a house. It's going to have more parking than a house. It's going to have concrete curving that a house may not have. But in, in other ways, where it can be made to look residential, to blend in the neighborhood, it should whether you consider that strict as in the Dover Amendment or not, I'll leave to another day. But there's no reason that something like that can't be done uh, if this board is trying to protect the neighborhood. Um, I'd like to submit uh, a couple of photographs. Uh, obviously, you know the neighborhood better than I do, but these are some photographs uh, from neighbors just to show the existing views of the, of the property and, uh, and through the property by, by the neighbors. Uh, I haven't shown these to Mr. McGowan yet, and there are more neighborhood shots labeled as such.
So if I make some mistakes, okay. uh, they're labeled. Three of them are labeled. The one that's not labeled is self-evident. It's a view of the property from the street. And that shows what's there to protect. Uh, you know from the historic uh, bylaw proceedings, and you know from your familiarity with it, the, the character of the neighborhood, the appearance of the houses, the spacing, the streetscape, the views <coughs> into and across properties. Uh, some of that will not be protected if this, if this facility is built, but much of it can be. And the key, the key again, the key variable is the parking and what can be done at, in the rear half of the property, uh, and on the right-hand side where the parking is. So I've probably taken less than my 15 minutes because I do want to make sure that there's time left for the neighbors to speak for themselves. But the point is, is whatever whatever is uh, technically the scope of this hearing, and I haven't argued to you that it's much broader than what you said, but I've argued that, it, that it's uncertain, and that you can, you can and you should push the envelope a little bit if you see the need to do so to protect the neighborhood. Not push it beyond where town council is advised to go, of course, but apply these rigorously. Uh, and that if you do that, uh, if you do that, you will be able to apply those bylaw criteria <coughs> uh, and protect the neighborhood much more than the existing plan to do without, again, impairing the program in any meaningful way. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I do want to repeat just one more time the areas that we will be discussing um, or we are open to discuss because it seems like there's been a little bit of discussion and almost debate about that. I just want to be clear. Um, the bulk and height of structures, yard sizes, lot area, setbacks, open space parking, uh, building coverage requirements, and then uh, lighting hours of operation and landscaping. That's really what we're going to be operating. Is that well, uh, in face of anything that I... That's to both yes. sides. No, that's what you, that's what you read okay. earlier. The only thing I added to that list was uh, signage. Okay. Okay. And then one other thing that I did forget to mention. This thing obviously has the potential to go pretty late, but we'll come 10.30. We all got to work tomorrow, I'm sure. So we will adjourn the meeting at 10.30 um, unless we see things potentially wrapping up within short order after 10.30. But um, we want to we want to get out of here at a reasonable hour. So 10.30 will be the point where we adjourn the meeting. And right now, because that clock is not always right. Oh, it is right tonight, about 8.45. <laughs> All right, so let's open it up to the CPDC. John, Dennis, what, what comments, questions do you have this far? Uh, <laughs> I'll go first if you want. Um, so, uh, um, I think you were absolutely right in, in stating um, uh, about parking really is the key. Um, it drops a lot of the impacts um, to, the, to the neighbors. Um, and um, and is, I, what I think is probably um, something um, sort of that will be the focus of sort of what we're talking about here today. Um, I, I guess I would, I would start off um, not by asking why so much, um, but uh, I would start the discussion of why so little, um, in the sense that when and and I'll, I'll preface that by saying I don't know what the answer is. I, I see both sides of of uh, um, uh, uh, it's a balance. It's a it's a it's a trade off both for um, both for the applicant and for the for the impacts. Um, when I read through the, um, the information, um, and I got some additional information um, this afternoon, which I didn't have a chance to digest, but um, I, if I remember it correctly, there would be um, three, um, uh, uh, at any one time, there would be um, three classrooms with uh, eight children and um, two or three uh, staff members in those classrooms. So that's, um, call it 33 um, participants at any one time. 
Um, I, I'm going to assume that every child um, that comes, they're obviously coming with a parent. Um, so there's a car for each one of them. And I'm going to guess that a, a, a car for each one of the, um, each one of the teachers. Um, you also have some, you said, um, some uh, teachers or some uh, staff uh, that wouldn't necessarily be um, working in the classrooms. Um, you, I think there is seven or eight listed in there. Anyways, um, and it wasn't quite clear how many of those would be the teachers versus people doing some more administrative um, activities. But um, you certainly get up to, to uh, 39 pretty quickly. Um, and if I, I, I've also got to imagine that there will be a time when more than one parent comes um, in, in, in more than one, one car. Um, so uh, quickly, you have probably not more than, much more than 39, but more than 39. So I guess the first thing that I would ask um, is, you know, in the cases where, um, where there are, or I, I just put it out there. I'm not really asking the question, but I'm just putting it out there that um, that it seems that there would be cases where um, where there would be um, uh, 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 regularly um, cars, um, more cars that that than that can fit on the site. Um, I, I don't. I, again, it's not a question. Um, I don't think that's a that's um, uncommon for this neighborhood with the other activities that are the schools and the churches and the um, and the um, uh, nursery schools that are sort uh, are in the in the neighborhood I know there's a lot of on-street parking so that's not unusual um, but I I, I I think that's why parking is the key I also recognize that parking um, I that when I first looked at the site plan I I I had a um, I double take because there was so much parking um, uh, so and, and that drives a lot of the impact so I honestly think that this that the parking issue is going to be a balance to how many you you want to fit on site how many you can fit on site and how much of the other maybe it's four maybe it's five cars um, uh, 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 does the with the neighborhood feel comfortable with um, parking out on the street on a regular basis so that again wasn't a question. <coughs> yeah, understood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> um, do you want a response, or, or do you want to ask some questions? Like um, I, I can respond. To yeah. That. Yeah. Why don't sure. we sure. stay on the topic? Sure. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I've been doing these these kinds of cases since 1978, and usually the the complaints of, of neighbors are you don't have enough parking spaces. You're going to flood the streets. Put more parking in. Um, what what Dr. Littleton tells me is that 39 spaces would render the need for on-street parking virtually non-existent. Uh, that 39 spaces was trying to anticipate the maximum uh, use of the facility at any one time. Uh, not all the parents show up all the time, uh, so that when they they came to 39, that was to try to achieve a situation where there would be no need for on-street back. Um, certainly, if, if this board wanted to ask them to have a few less packing spaces, I don't think that would be an issue. If we were getting down to uh, you know anything close to the minimum required by the zoning bylaw, then it would so negatively impact the, the program that I don't think it's permissible. But um, we're trying to minimize the impact on the neighborhood with this number of packing spaces. And I think the 39 to answer your, your comment is, is sufficient, uh, according to, to Bob Littleton. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thanks. I, I, can, I can amplify on that if you'd like. That's more substance. Uh, but um, basically, well, we just took all, all, of, all of our staff uh, at the most intensive time that they could be there possibly and statistically which never never happens frankly um, and in that case there would not be clients receiving service at that time so that really is the greatest number you would ever have statistically and even at that statistical number as we know 
not everybody shows up for every scheduled requirement or at, at, at the same time at the same moment. We just felt like we wanted to be absolutely uh, transparent and candid about the ability to accommodate everything on the lot. Um, and, and I think the council said correctly, okay. we could downsize that a bit. But so the numbers that I were at, I was adding up was the I'm going to say the the worst, co the highest possible demand. Um, understanding, uh, understanding that that highest um, uh, possible demand never in the real world adds up all uh, right. together in, in our um, operations, yeah. or or in fact, just because of how we provide okay. service, would that ever happen? Okay. Point of order, Mr. Hanson, Chairman Hanson. Yes. Um, a statement was made that in additional information was received this afternoon. This is a public hearing. People have spent a lot of time looking at the public, the public documents. Was there information submitted today that wasn't made public to the other participants in this hearing? That information has not been made available. What Can I ask what this information was? It was the letter provided by Maxwell Architect. Um, that came in this afternoon, or excuse me, came right? Yeah, and it was. I got it at like four o'clock. Yeah. 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 Responses to questions from town staff. Is that part of the public record, though? We should have copies for our council and for members of our group. Like I say, we've reserved rooms down here. We've come in and paid for plans, ex ex you know, reviewed the plans, and then to, you know, not be prepared for this is really not fair to us. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we can certainly make this available to you. Like we said, this was very late in the day, and I don't believe I've seen your attorney's letter that was submitted as well. Yeah, I, um, it's even later. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I saw it in the packet. I saw it after it's a lot we started of talking. Information. So. so no, I, I agree um, that we don't. We're certainly not trying to hide anything, and we'll make this available to you. Can we have copies now? We're discussing it. Can we have a couple of copies right now? No, we might have a couple of copies. Which, I mean, is it here in the test pack? No, it's in the test pack. It may have been made. Yeah, uh, page. Page 20. Page 23, page 26, page 27. Desk packet and page. Oh, this is what I printed off. Uh, page 23, page 26, page 27. Can we also, excuse me, my name is number two. It's Debbie, Debbie Sean Stagg. Well, can we also have a copy of their attorney's letter that came very late in the day? But none of, none of us really had a chance to look at. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So let's continue the conversation. We'll get you some as many copies as we have available. Um, I have a question for the applicant on signage. Uh, I don't believe I've seen anything, um, but would like to understand what your thoughts are for signage related to this property. Can bring up the uh, rendering. Uh, the, the sign location is here. That, but, oops, sorry. The, um, the the sign it it is on the rendering that I believe is in yeah. the okay, information that you that received. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and even I can't read uh, that copy. But the idea is that it's a ground-mounted monument sign out back from the driveway. Uh, back from the sidewalk, that the base of it, it the sign itself is 42 inches long and um, 30 inches high. Uh, it's not on this rendering, but it's down lower on the plan. It is on the site plan. We were showing it. Um, that would not. It would not be. It would not be an eternally illuminated plan. Uh, that sign. Which plan do you mean? The site plan. There. So it, it shows it's right here. Uh, and if it needs to move behind uh, the front yard setback, we can we can do that. Uh, we were trying to keep it far enough forward so that uh, motorists, <coughs> first time visitors to the site could find it, low to the ground. Uh, and again, it would not be internally illuminated, but there would be a couple of uh, small ground lights that would shine on it and would be on the same time clock as the rest of the site lighting. 
um, which is very limited because we're not there in the evening. Okay. So, so we time clock, meaning you, the lights would shut off at Just a certain hour? Just shut off altogether. Okay. Yes. Yes. And you said it's, I'm sorry, I should have it in front of you, but 40 by 30? Yes. 42 by 30. Uh, 42 yeah. by 30, sitting on an 8 inch plinth okay. to bring it up out of the grass. And nothing on the structure is being proposed as far as signage goes? No. Okay. No. Thank you. <clears throat> I reviewed the, the plans uh, fairly extensively and the, the documents. The only, I did have the, a similar question on the parking. I mean, I was leaning on the, on the why so many side, uh, but we've heard both formulae and it makes sense to me. Um, the adjusting the curb cuts results in moving the uh, paved area closer to the abutting property than the existing driveway, certainly. Uh, but it seems to be a fairly, a fairly substantial distance between the, um, the building, f the parking areas and the building proper. Is there um, a reason why the uh, paved area was not a little bit closer to the structures and thereby uh, further from the abutting property? One of the reasons that we set that driveway and parking away from the building was a DRT comment that we had. We, when we were using the existing curb cuts, all of the paving and parking was closer to the house, the school, and the playground. And they asked us if we could move it away or protect the playground and the sidewalk and the entries to the school from an errant car or driver <coughs> uh, pulling up through there. So we did pull it down. Um, the other issue with a, a <coughs> DRT response, which was wanting the alignment of the full driveway, the full length of the building and all the development, so that a, an emergency vehicle could pull in straight and could back out, because that it's unlikely that a ladder truck is going to make the three-point turn that a car would make. And so they didn't want to be stuck in the property and then have a curve or a bow or a wave or a U at the two curb cuts that they had to deal with. So that gave us this very straight alignment uh, and did force it down a bit. And the other um, thing, the, the, new, the proposed new school building from the driveway side uh, looks quite appropriate I mean, and, and very reasonable uh, adjuncts to the existing historic property. But from the other side, the, the north elevation, if you will, it looks pretty spare. Pretty spare. So um, the, um, we're trying to balance out not wanting windows on that close, near residential abutting side. It's also where we've placed more of the utility spaces that have less need for windows. Although if we, uh, if we wanted more fenestration on that back side, we could do that. We're also respecting the dimensional setback on the back side of 30 feet for this use in this district. And that's pulled us sort of tight so there isn't a lot of articulation. We can't do a bay window or a bay on the building or pop something out on that side. <coughs> um, but we did, we have tried to add some windows on that side and we could push it a little further, but they would be windows into closets and uh, utility spaces and the elevator and that sort of thing, uh, the rear stairwell. So we were trying to keep that and any stray light, again, this time of year there will be lights on uh, in the building, and we were trying to keep that and any view of the abutting residential property to a minimum. Well, I was thinking more, I mean, I, I looked at the plan, I understood that the, uh, the function of the, the rooms on that side of the building uh, restrict the actual windows. But it's a case where you might put in um, a false, um, basically a decorative frame. Uh, Gene, if you brought us to the rear elevation, the, there's two pages of elevations, and there's one that has that north elevation on it. It will be down. Uh, one more. So we're talking about this elevation on the back. Exactly. And, and yes, I mean, these are. These are into bathrooms, these are into storage room, this is the rear stair. So yes, we could 
add some more fenestration there. I don't know that I would want to <coughs> increase the size of the of the restroom windows much. Well, but I, I would, yeah. would not suggest increasing the size of the actual opening, mm -hmm. but the uh, appearance of, I mean, if you, if you gave it the surface appearance sure. of uh, windows, it would be right, on the front, more regular. Right. Mm -hmm. On the front of the building, we've, uh, if you go up one, Gene, please. Um, on the front side of the building, we've respected the size and the, and the proportion of the historic windows with our new windows. We could go to the back of the building and frame those out in trim and then put the real windows where they are uh, inside that, and maybe some of those are simply trimmed out openings as if a window's been closed in. That's what I was thinking. Otherwise, it looks, um, and I, I may get slings and arrows from the neighborhood, but it looks like a uh, sensible approach. Thank you. Will the project be broken into phases, meaning will the barn work happen after perhaps business is opened, you're accepting students? What, what we anticipate is, and of course um, approvals will, uh, and the sequence and the timing of approvals will, will make some of the difference, but our intention is that the new addition will be constructed and the historic house will be renovated at the same time, um, that we will stabilize the barn and depending on exactly how we have to deal with it, whether we need to do fire protection or emergency systems in there, uh, because we, the building code allows us to treat this all as a single building on the site because of its cumulative size, um, but we will do all of that at one time. The idea of more extensive barn renovations, our structural engineer has suggested that over time we're going to need to do more, some more substantial uh, repairs to the building and its foundation and its structure, uh, that we would not be doing that in the initial phase and thus we would not be using the barn in the initial phase, but we would stabilize it to protect it. Mm -hmm. It has a new roof, but it has a fair amount of um, uh, deterioration in the siding and the openings and the foundation work. So we believe we need to do some of that right away to stabilize it and protect it. Yeah. Just um, a point of information, I mean, not, not a real concern. What is the, the, the framework of the barn? Is it post and beam or is that some other um, conventional? It, it is. It, some of it is, it's actually more balloon framed than post and beam. Okay. There are posts and beams in there, but in general, it's not um, that hefty framework that you would expect. Okay. Um, so can we talk about um, lighting? Um, I, 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 I just want to make sure that I understand the lighting plan, and I thought I had seen one comment about light spillage, um, but maybe that was... Um, Right. Right. This, this, this staff question that we got was about dark sky. Okay. Um, and uh, I spoke with the lighting designer today. Um, <laughs> this is a light image, but in fact, <laughs> we're n we have very low lighting levels. Um, there's pole lamps, are these large, the rear parking along the main drive and near the front entry, but the circle that you see talks about the significant light levels, which are quite low. They're less than a foot candle at the perimeter of all of that. Um, we have a series of bollards, uh, and they also have relatively low light level. Those are along the walkway. Um, there are a couple of ground signs, uh, ground lights on the sign, which would have protective shields, um, as would there is a what what we think of as a, a wall pack, a wall light here. Uh, and that is lighting towards the playground, which sits there, which also would be ordered specified with a shield. Um, the main pole lights have, there's an LED fixture in the bottom that shines up at a reflector in the top that then aims the light down. Those are dark sky compliant. The bollards have louvers that are angled down to the ground, so they're not shedding any direct light up. Um, the sconce, is there are seven of these decorative sconces, um, mostly at the entry doorways, um, and they are not dark sky compliant, but in fact they aim the bulk of their light down and they're very low wattage. And so there's no place around the perimeter where we have any perceptible light level 
beyond the site, but that's a different question than the dark sky. Right. right. Um, so how high the um, um, how tall are the pole the length? Pole lights yeah. are, are 12 feet in the stalk, uh, and then the the fixture, the fixture is enough. less than 24 yeah. inches. And, and the um, and bollards the are 40, bollards. 45 and 3 eighths inches to All the right. top. So um, the light is a little bit below the top. Um, and um, would these, I think someone mentioned, those would be all on timers tied to the, um, your, your operation? Correct. Um, even the wall pack in the um, back, that's the one I did, you know, that's, yes. the, the wall packs um, are the ones that um, we end up seeing left on um, and, and, and do end up um, causing the most um, we, we would the most we would tie light. all these into a dusk to okay. dawn and then a timer um, so that they're they can't be on during the daytime and that they would only be on when the operation so there'll be a time clock inside that says we're gone by seven the lights are off uh, and the again this there's a single wall pack on the back of the barn that's just a sort of a safety light on the um, on the playground and that would have, it's not shown here, but there's a three-sided shield, framing shield essentially, uh, that would take care of any stray light off the property. And then did I see on the back side there's stairs down into a, a, a lower level? Yes, there, um, there, there's a, under yeah. this portion of the addition, there's a mechanical basement, and there is a egress stair out of that basement that comes up along the back of the building and then connects to the sidewalk here. And so there is, it would be one of these fixtures that would be above that doorway. Okay, okay. but there, uh, there's lighting. Correct. So, okay. <coughs> That's my question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm good. Yeah. Uh, and then, if I can keep going. Yeah, you, keep going. Uh, yeah. Um, and then I, I just want to understand, um, um, well, le <laughs> a derivative of lighting is glare and, and screening. Um, uh, it, I completely agree. I mean, the, the changes, I think, that came out of the DRT with having the absolutely sort of um, straight driveway um, that will really keep lights um, focus straight down the, the driveway there and if correct me anyone if I'm wrong um, the the is the entire um, uh, uh, lot line in the back um, line up with the school parking lot or are there is there um, any residential um, um, properties on that back end Gene, does, does the just um, clear. does the GIS plan show up in that I think towards the back of that presentation, is that in there? Okay, it's not, um, if you, if you, go, oh, I don't know. Uh, the locust plant, come down to locust plant, please. There you go. Yeah. So, the, uh, great, so, the back of the site, the back of that parking, the staff parking that tees off, is all along the school. This is the school parking. Right. So it's all along the school parking. Uh, in the, uh, the way the parking is, the headlights would be forward. And what we were talking about is that we could do a stockade fence along this edge so that we would take care of any lights onto the Temple Street and then the, the, uh, the abutter to the south. But it, to answer your question directly, the back headlights yeah. forward is into the school parking. Okay. Yeah. Through a, a substantial uh, landscape area. I mean, there's a lot of green in there. Well, there is now, but well, there, and, and there, there doesn't appear certain. like there will. I mean, there will be some, but probably it doesn't look like enough to screen out headlights. Uh, yeah. So, but I think that the, and I guess where I was, where I was headed was, um, so that means that the, there's two, there's really one property there um, that would be, um, 
uh, I don't want to use the word significantly, but uh, more impacted than anyone else in terms of, of headlights, which is that, um, I don't know how to describe it, but that, that one property um, there where cars would come in and turn south, um, but if you're going to, yes, that yeah. one right there. Yes, yes. Well, and, and there so is an existing six foot stockade fence at this end in a bit of disrepair and what we're suggesting is that we could um, we could protect much of this until we get to the mature trees that are up in the front of the site but that we could put a continuous six foot fence along there and take care of all the headlight. Okay. Has there been, <coughs> out of curiosity, has there been any discussion with the uh, Parker Parker Street School about uh, shared parking access? There has been no conversation. Because sometimes they could use the extra space if few people were not using it. I've got a question with regards to Mr. Kruger's point about um, eliminating 19 trees. Is there any opportunity to reduce that? I'm looking at the location of some of these trees. If, if we could go to the landscape plan, yeah. please. In the, um, I was looking at the demo plan, and I see a couple of trees X'd out. That there, there's, it's shown both places. Okay, yes, yeah, so let's take a so look at that. So if we look at this, no, that, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. right back where you were. That works. <laughs> That? I'm sorry, go back to the plans. Uh, the annotated? Nope, the, the full ones. Right. And so there's been much discussion about all the trees back here. We walked it with our landscape architect, Jack and John Williams from my office. Um, and we identified all the trees of size. Um, what you cannot tell here. Our landscape architect identified a significant number of trees that should be removed, that they are either dead or dying. Um, they are large trunks and they are there. They do meet that, that six inch or larger criteria. But of these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and there may be another one above, uh, 13 mm -hmm. there, of those trees, there's some number of those that should come down. One, because they're dead or diseased, um, and two, that there are sugar maples, which are a valuable tree, and there are Norwood maples, which are considered by arborists um, to be not such valuable trees, and they tend to crowd other things out. And that's one of the problems in this back area, which seems very dense right now, but if you actually walk it, as we have many times, there's a lot of things that are very small that give it thickness but they're not going to survive. They're crowded out by the daylight. And a lot of these trees have become very leggy. They're very tall, and the crowns are at the top because there's not enough daylight. So if an, an arborist went in here, they would say, even if you were leaving all the trees, this number of trees should come out, and then we should take some other trees down to thin the crown so the daylight can get a little deeper into there. So um, we have adjusted when we, when we move the site a little, a little when we moved the parking a little bit further to the south, we were able to save a few trees. Um, and between that, we're trying to mediate between the grading and the base of the tree because you can't raise the back of the site and uh, encompass the first three feet of a tree and have it survive. So um, it's sort of a balance with us. If, if we were to eliminate some of the parking, um, we probably would take it off the ends and we would look to save the healthier trees that were in that space. We marked over 100. What's that? We marked over 100 trees. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we marked over 100 trees um, of uh, six inches or larger on the site. Of which 19 are being removed? Is that the number that I heard? Well, 19 in the back, 24 overall. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, okay. And the 100 trees they talk about are just in the rear here. The, the, these trees, we didn't count in that total. We went out and located, I think it was like 112 trees in this back section. Okay, thank you. R related note, there was a comment, um, I think from the, um, I think it came from the um, uh, town engineer about some trees that should possibly, or some proposed new trees that, possibly, that should be relocated because of the Snow storage area. Can you point sure. out where if that? If you go to the landscape plan, 
Uh, like to be down. <coughs> there. This. Uh, I'm sorry. Up one. Uh, well, no. Let's go to the real landscape one. Hmm. Where is it in here? Yeah, it should be. Was that eight? Eight. eight. I'm sorry. Go back to slide eight. Isn't it in Jacks? No, yeah. it's yeah. it's uh, between the two sets. Mm. No, no, keep going. I'm sorry. There, this one. So these were the trees. Um, there's a <coughs> two, two rows of ginkgos that the landscape architect is suggesting that we both. He's he's trying to shade and uh, minimize the appearance of the whole property uh, along the driveway and from the abutting side. And what we were talking about is Jack had shown some snow storage along here, and we can space these trees out. These are new trees that we're going to plant, and we can pull them back. Now we're talking about a bit more fence here, and so we wouldn't need to do this, um, this very dense tree buffer that we were going to do with yews and some other planting, uh, because that would be behind the bat, and we can look to draw these ginkgos out a little bit longer into the site and give more space between them so that if there is snow storage here um, that we could accommodate it there. That's what he was asking. And then these are, this is a large set of existing trees which we are protecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, um, that covers the board's questions. I'm now going to ask planning staff to walk through any questions or comments that they have. Um, I'm going to have Jesse talk specifically about the parking demand study, but that's probably the single uh, most important uh, comment that we made. Um, and um, the other comments, I think, have been pretty well discuss the screening and the fencing. Um, we got some additional information on that. Um, the exterior elevations and the landscaping plan. So the lighting as well was something we commented about, but I think that we covered most of those points. But I'll let Jesse go into some of the issues related to the parking demand study. Yes. Yeah, so obviously kind of had the same concerns that the board has raised with much of the too little you know we really didn't have a lot of information to go by in their um, application other than they indicated there was so many students and so many teachers um, so we went ahead and requested for a parking demand study to sh sort of show us exactly what the true need would be for the site um, the that was included in our memo um, I'm not sure if the applicant the applicant has not responded to, to that particular comment at this time. Um, I did speak with the town engineer who agreed that would be um, reasonable to ask for um, to really sort of figure out where we find that nice balance for the parking. And just to note, that memo was distributed on December 2nd, dated December 2nd. Okay. Okay. Any response on that request? What we, what we provided is the, um, the times of the normal sessions uh, and how they would be staffed and what we expect to be um, <coughs> the largest Tuesday and Wednesday morning sessions where we would have the overlapping of classes and staff. But uh, we haven't done any further. We should have peaked them in. Okay. And, and we think that I'm, I saw the request, but we think that what was provided is responsive in that it shows why the number of packing spaces uh, was chosen, having to do with the use of the, of the facility. The 32 plus the 7. Correct, the 39 yeah. spaces altogether. I, I think the difference in, the, in a situation like this is it's not a general public, public walk in off the street, you've had a successful advertising campaign or something. These are known people, known referrals, you know the, who's coming when, you know the demands. And we took the most, you know, below, above what could possibly happen. 
as the, the, the basis for design so that we would be sure not to park on the street. Yeah, no, I, and it's all about that balance too, right? We don't want too many spaces, but I also, I know when I drive down somewhere Ave, I don't love when cars are parked in the street. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, and I see a comment in the back from town engineer. Mr. Chairman, I, I think the reason why Jesse and Gene, we asked that question. And I, I was uh, in with that, and I didn't mention it in my comments. Is that while we do have, have that information from the applicant, what that information does not give us is the overlap. And it's the overlap of cars that are leaving and coming in that is going to generate the, the peak number of parking spaces. And, and the information provided does not give us that. <coughs> Thank you. And, and Bob, correct me if I'm stating this wrong, mm -hmm. but what, what Dr. Littleton is telling me is that the 39 spaces uh, accounts for the maximum use at any one time, overlap or not. Am I, am I saying that correctly? That's correct. So, so, so in other words, there's, there's not a turnover of 39 and 39. It's 39, period. I'm confused. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, um, uh, it because doesn't quite. I guess. Yeah, I guess that's where if if you can do the math because it doesn't all it doesn't, uh, tie it doesn't quite. I mean, we got it's something. It, 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 we got something um, today at I saw it first at four o'clock um, with with nine fifteen to eleven forty five at twelve p.m. to one thirty and twelve thirty to two thirty so three different sessions which is different than what was in the application which said you had the three classes at you know the eight each and in, in those those two blocks between one in the morning one in the afternoon mm -hmm. so um, and, and then but with a eleven forty five to twelve block um, uh, uh, I would expect that there may be some of that mm -hmm. overlap um, uh, kids uh, parents leaving uh, parents um, coming at in and then I guess the other thing is <coughs> that um, it, it is the 39 spaces does that include the four handicap yes. spaces so um, you know what's your what's your typical um, um, population that uses the handicap spaces I mean typically you you have more than um, uh, more spaces handicap spaces than um, are used on a regular basis so you don't quite have 39 um, and, and I don't think that you're, I, I, my sense is you're not hearing that you have to have, I don't think, I, I'm going to say, I don't think anyone's going to look and, and, and um, uh, to try, try and get more, more spaces on this site, um, but just an understanding of the, of the demand. And so sort of adding it all up, putting it on a piece of paper so that people understand what the <coughs> is is what the request is. The, the, the 39 is the maximum number. If we had every single part-time, full-time staff member on site at exactly the same time, which again, so just never yeah. happens. Um, and it's the uh, a number above what we would have in terms of having uh, families on the site and the staff supporting them. So that, that is the max condition under worst case scenario. Uh, and uh, accommodates both mm -hmm. the coming to the right. the worst, the worst, the most dense period that we could have on that side would be accommodated by the 39 mm -hmm. I, mean, I guess, but what's, I the, the, what's the typical, right? I mean, that's the worst. All right, what's it? What's typical? Right. So, that's that's really what we'd be looking for. Right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's right. To understand that trade-off. Yeah, that this was just a little bit confusing to read through. Um, you indicate there's typical, there's three, it looks like there's three sessions that happen throughout the day. And then you say the largest possible use is 32 children in two groups of 16 with one parent. And then you say that there's, at most, three sessions happen simultaneously. Is this three groups or three sessions? that's the most that could happen. It does that happens uh, with actual illness and otherwise never even have that number. But just going to the uh, 
max off occupancy numbers based on square foot of classrooms. And so Would you be willing to do the parking impact study? I think, I think we've done it. I think we've given, given, given the numbers max use. Well, what would it look like, uh, Mr. Hanson? The, uh, what is it that you're requesting that hasn't been given already? So we can respond. I, I mean, I would defer to the town engineer on this, but in the past, we've we've actually in situations where they have other locations, um, you know, you use data to support that from your other locations. If you, if you're planning on doing a similar operation um, with similar hours, we would appreciate some sort of information on those on those, as well as Georgia. Is it the you know the land use codes, the ITE that we would also be looking at? Mm. No. And I, I, yeah, if we have other examples, and yeah. you, you said it a number of times, that's the most. Well, what's the what's it what's it a typical? Um, you know, so the, the, what do you experience yeah. at other piece, the places? Probably you think, fall so. into is if we don't if we don't plan for the most, then we get criticized. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can understand yeah. why we're reluctant sure. to, yeah. to do other than provide full, full coverage. I mean, usually when we when we've asked it of others it's a it's a two or three page memo citing um, you know where you know if here I'm seeing um, you know typically it's 29 children but so what's that I'm gonna call it an absentee rate you know you you're you're you know typically one or two kids per classroom don't come you know how did you get to that 29 um, you know what what other sites do you experience that parking rate at um, so that we get an understanding? And then what's that overlap of, of the schedule? Uh, un, un, understanding you're both a maximum. You can lay that out, what the maximum is and then what the typical is. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, this, so are they saying, so they have these three sessions, one, two, and three, and then 32 children in two groups with six of 16, but then three sessions help, I don't, so I don't get what they're trying to, so they have one session, is one session 32 well. students, or, one, or is it multiple classes going on within this session? Because they have multiple classrooms. They have sessions and then. Between the all, all the classrooms. That's the largest. Yeah. They can't have more than 32. Well, what, what we're suggesting is we, <coughs> we come back to this and go on to other matters because if, <coughs> if you believe that we haven't given you, and especially with this December 8th letter uh, from Mac Maxwell, if we haven't given you what you need, it's an easy thing to elaborate based on Criterion's extensive experience with early intervention programs, if, if that's going to uh, satisfy the board. Yeah. Uh, but I would ask that you take a look at what we've given you in December 8th, and uh, before we leave, let us know if it's sufficient. If not, then uh, I think we can get you what you need very quickly. Okay. Okay. I think we agree that there's some questions and a little bit of confusion about the numbers and how they work. So it may just be <coughs> just filling that out to more depth and detail. Yeah, and, and also if there if there are um, constraining factors like the maximum ch children per classroom, just put it together so we can see it. <coughs> we can get that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, would a class scheduling, typical class schedule, be helpful? I know in the past we've um, looked at that with other schools. Yeah. If there's a kind of a typical schedule 
that could More go along with that. We've, we've yeah. given you that in, in the clarifications we sent today. Yeah. 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 There are those three sessions. Yeah. Session 9, 15, 11, 45, 12 to 130, 1230 to 230. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. And you say there's virtually no evening or weekend use of the building. Does that mean that there's sometimes evening or weekend use? It might be four times a year. Or it might be some, uh, an activity in so maybe some in additional information just so we have a really clear picture of, you know, what the utilization of it is. That would be helpful. So staying with staff comments, anything else? I believe I believe they addressed um, yeah I believe they addressed everything else okay so I'm gonna give the town engineer an opportunity to to speak I know that he submitted a memo a lot of that does not fall under zoning but I still want to give George an opportunity hey, Mr. Chairman, um, I, think I, can, I can summarize my memo in probably four, uh, four or five statements um, I did there were a couple statements in front uh, that I did talk about what they did uh, meet that we expressed in the DRT. I did mention about the lighting and from what I could see in the uh, perimeter of the uh, property, it, uh, I can show that the <coughs> zero spillage at the property line with the exception of right near the uh, edge of the driveway, you have 0.1 foot candles. So the statements they made are correct. Um, I did request the addition of two additional no parking signs. Uh, what was shown on the original plan is only two signs on that whole stretch of the uh, right hand side and typically typically if you're going to put parking you have one in the beginning and you have one in the end with arrows parking in it's a long stretch uh, so that they should put one uh, near the entrance uh, near the driveway entrance itself and just before you get to the T section uh, if the uh, if the intent is to eliminate parking on all that entire side which I assume it is um, I did have a comment about snow storage. Uh, I don't think, while the st snow storage is shown on the plan, looks like there's a lot of areas, in my opinion, there's not enough. Um, if you take a normal uh, winter uh, season through here, uh, if you have a heavy season, or if you have some back-to-back -back snowstorms, the narrow strips that are shown, in, um, I don't think you could pile the snow that high. Uh, they're, uh, they're really, there's really insufficient area to uh, pile of snow, uh, snow in those locations. And uh, I think they have to do better than that or consider alternative measures. Um, uh, plus, you know, they're only going to be able to go so high because they have existing vegetation in uh, those locations. <coughs> um, I'll skip my major comments, save that to last. I did make a request to. Uh, that they provide a stormwater uh, O&M plan. Uh, it's something that we ask everybody of. Uh, not so much that it's in our regulations, uh, but with all these new devices that everyone's using, uh, and with the MS4 permit we have, uh, that the EPA actually finally, finally issued the draft this December, uh, and the comment period uh, is over in, uh, I forget exactly, but the beginning of the year, uh, we did have a meeting with EPA a couple of weeks ago. They fully expect that uh, within a year, the permit will actually be f formally issued. And in that permit, um, we're going to we're going to we're going to we're going to be required to ask O and M plans of all the commercial, industrial, and all the major areas in the town. So uh, we've been asking everybody for the past five years. Uh, so uh, you do, you will need a formal O and M plan that will need to be. Uh, submitted and approved uh, that will go through maintenance schedules of uh, how you deal with your storm water and will be required to be submitted to my office which we've been uh, telling everybody June January 15th of each year because that's in our report annual report that we have to submit to the EPA. As far as storm water management system Jack uh, <coughs> kind of brushed upon it um, he uh, we did have a discussion today my major concern is probably twofold. Um, 
in one of them I actually neglected to put in the, uh, I forgot to actually physically make a comment, but I'll, I'll start with a major one. Porous pavement typically is used as a supplement to stormwater management. It is typically not used as your primary and only sole measure of stormwater management. Um, and that is why I made the recommendations to, um, in my memo, about the curb inlets, although I did ask for more than two. Uh, I suggested that the curb inlets be installed at a location so that if the porous pavement fails, you're still gonna be able to get uh, the runoff into the, um, the stone underneath it. The other part of the uh, hydraulic calculations, I have concerns of how it was modeled. Um, Jack is gonna go look at that and re uh, revise his calculations. If I'm correct, uh, they're probably going to need more stories than what they're showing right now. Um, there, and, and there. This is the comment that I didn't uh, make: is that there's only, I believe, two test pits, Jack. Two. Two, and we have a. Uh, you ha we have an extensive area of pavement that we assume the soil is the same, but we don't really know. Um, I think there should be more test pits to, to determine if the soil is all the same. Um, the alternative to that, although this is, we normally do this for infiltration systems, but I think this is somewhat different. It should be determined now. <coughs> when you're physically working on the site, if the soil is different, then all of a sudden you do a redesign. Uh, I don't think anyone wants to go through a redesign after the fact. I think there should be more, since they've got to go porous pavement with the uh, entire area, um, there should be a couple of additional test pits to prove that the soil in the back is what they're designing the system on. The reason why I have a concern about porous pavement, and the way I mentioned in my uh, early statement, that it's typically used as a supplement, is other systems, when they fail, they typically fail slowly. Porous pavement can fail instantly. And when it fails, that means nothing works. Um, and I don't know if the applicant has uh, has uh, even considered that, you know, when this fails, it's not just like you're repaving a driveway. You're not stripping off a layer and adding another layer of asphalt down. You're completely replacing every ounce of pavement in that parking lot. Um, you know, while the gutter inlets will work, it will get the water into the system. Um, I, and it will, it, it, it will function properly. I strongly suggest they rethink their means of how they're going to deal with stuff. They may want to go to more a uh, more conventional system. Um, the uh, the other thing that the porous pavement doesn't do, it doesn't do any treatment of the uh, runoff. It just infiltrates it. Uh, there is no treatment on this site. Um, the rest of my questions really dealt with permitting. Um, one of the issues was how they calculated uh, the volume of uh, sewage on the site, <coughs> and that just really comes down to an issue of whether they would require an INI fee or not require an INI fee. But I think my, my biggest concerns really are how they, uh, is the, what I feel is inadequate snow storage and the they do have to uh, re revisit the hydraulic calculations to make sure they are correct in the manner of how they're going to deal with storm water. I, I strongly suggest they rethink it. Any questions? Respond to that. Yeah, and um, I've used porous pavement on about 15 different sites, and what's critical with porous pavement is the operation and maintenance plan. Um, it's such a large area here. Um, if sections filled up, you, you would still have large sections where the, the pavement would still <coughs> still function properly and allow water to move through the surface. Like I, I, I designed the site five years ago. They've had no issues with it at all. Um, and in fact, DEP stormwater, they actually suggests this it's it's an approved technology for low impact development 
where you don't want to see detention basins, where you don't want to see catch basins, storm scepters, other components that still need maintenance. If you don't maintain a storm scepter, if you don't clean up detention basins, any drainage system, if you don't perform maintenance, can fail. So that's why we're, we're saying we'll provide the operation and maintenance plan. Uh, the whole idea with the porous pavement, I came into the DRT meeting proposing the porous pavement really just because it's, it's low impact in the area we're in. I could do a more conventional system, which would be catch basins, storm basins, infiltrators, rain gardens, detention ponds. I just wanted to keep this as low impact as possible for, the, for this setting. Um, George is correct. I modeled this, the, the A-series soils, meaning sands, gravels, water moves quickly, that we don't have a high groundwater table issue on this site at all. Um, I only did two test pits. We can do two additional test pits to the rear. I suspect we'll still find any soils, but I agree with George, it should be verified. It's just a wooded area. We'd have to get in with a backhoe. We, we can do soil testing year-round, so it's not a problem timing-wise for us. Um, so I don't have an issue with that. The way I modeled it conservatively is I said assume an infiltration rate for a B soil, which is a slower soil. Um, but I talked with George about it. I will model it as an A story. It has significant storage in the two feet of stone underneath the pavement. It, for, for this parking area, I'm taking the entire roofed area of the buildings, the parking lot areas. Um, I think when I redo the calculations, it'll show I have sufficient storage. But I do have to provide that information to George so that he can verify it. I do like his idea about the, the gutter inlets to, mm -hmm. to, if there ever was a case for failure, as I suggested, if it's <coughs> two, three, four, five, whatever the gutter inlets are, all the gutter inlet is, instead of the vertical granite curving, you have a piece of vertical granite curving with, with an inlet on it. It allows water to move back and through into the stone. Um, I don't have a problem on the number that, that George and I can work that out. Um, I don't have a problem with that. It's probably a good idea. Um, but with any drainage system, there has to be maintenance. Um, and, and this is a system that we need. It, it's approved. The EP stormwater allows you to put in porous pavement. And then, so. And the snow storage, yeah. I'll, I'll address as well. There's other areas on site that we can stock, uh, pile more snow. There's a lawn area out front here where we could put some snow. The reason we tried to keep it narrow and long is because we are trying to maintain of the trees. We provided about a 25 foot buffer from the edge of the parking lot to the rear lot line. There's 25 feet there in, in trying to keep the trees. Obviously if I had to expand some of the snow areas we might lose some additional trees. So that was a trade-off. We, 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 we could try to extend snow storage areas <coughs> on the side in this area on the other <coughs> side of the walkway when they plow their walkways we could stack some over in here. We have some landscape area in the front we, we can do so, but that, that's why they're narrow and, and long in nature, trying to retain the, the, the existing tree vegetation. And what about the parking signs? But we'll, we'll gladly add those additional we'll signs. Add those. That, that came up at DRT, the, the police chief, uh, Chief Cormier, asked that some no parking signs be provided along the right-hand side, so we show some, but we can add two additional signs as well. Okay. All right, well, thank you for that. Um, let's open it up for public comment. So again, if you could just uh, raise your hand, show your number, um, and then just state your name. For the record, it would be appreciated. Who wants to break the X? Number one. <laughs> Outstanding. I'll number 17. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Carr, I live at 61 Temple Street. Uh, I had a letter that I was going to give you. Is it appropriate that I give you that letter tonight? It, it addresses four issues. I think uh, the town engineer has addressed three. I'd like to just add on that if I could. I live in the, on Temple Street, that lower corner. I stood there yesterday, and uh, I envisioned uh, the snow plow coming down that driveway and just start piling high mounds of snow in that area. And what I would request is that the permanent trees be put there to act as a permanent barrier so that the, the snow is not pushed onto the fence lines on the back side of the property. The other issue that I asked about is, the, uh, George talked about it, 
is the, the groundwater level in the back. Um, we did a test pit up at near Summer Street. Came down and what it was is the, the, the damp soil that he measured is only six inches above the ground level back at the fence at the Pocket Junior High School and six inches above the pavement on the edge of the curb in the back. So I think it's, uh, in my letter I recommend what they're doing is additional test pits back there to make sure that uh, they, they meet the DEP requirements for the design of soil pavement systems in that area. Uh, and the other issue, I guess it's the maintenance. The question is, what mechanism does the town have, uh, let's say in 10 years, if this system fails, what mechanism do we have to uh, force a criterion or a future owner to grab, go back in and rip out that impavement and put a new system in? Where we're sort of saying, do a maintenance plan, but what if it doesn't happen? And uh, my last issue was, uh, I live in that house, I hope to stay there 20 years, and um, I think in the rainfall computations, it's based on historical data. Uh, and I read a uh, statement from the Climate Change Commission that was just uh, published this year, and I quote, due to our change in climate, many 100-year floodplains have been reduced to 20-year floodplains. So I'm wondering if it's possible to uh, look through the literature and get the predict uh, predictions uh, that they're saying for 10, next 10 to 20 years for the increase in rainfall and intensities because of global warming. And let's see what happens if they apply that rainfall to this site in the design they're proposing. Thank you. Is it appropriate that I do right now? Yes, please. This is all the same. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments, sir? In, in the back, um, Jerry Lamb, 194 Summer Ave. And I, I have a couple yeah, personal comments because I live on 194 Summer Ave, which can I borrow the point? Sure. <laughs> Just push right there. Yeah, thanks. I live on 194, which is this property here. And, and I have a very narrow lot, it's like 85 feet wide. So, uh, you know, the forest pavement's great stuff, but I can't imagine when all this snow is plowed right here and this melts, what it's gonna do to my property. <coughs> okay, my house is like right about there. There's a, there's a driveway here in the house. So that concerns me honestly greatly. So, um, oops. What do I do, Jim? No, <laughs> I was going back to the um, locust plan so we could. And I thought Mr. Maxwell said the historical commission had him push the driveway away from the house, which to me is different than ERT. So. No, it wasn't. I'm, I'm sorry if I gave that impression. I might have misheard, but I, I just. He, he it was said DRT. DRT. I heard DRT. Yeah. No, he said it today, but the presentation, I thought you said historical committee. The reason I'm asking it is I, I would request that the driveway gets pushed back. So I don't know, you know, what, what type of give or you know, take there is with that. but. The original plan they had, it was 25 feet away from the house. Now it's with less than 10. So, again, piling snow there and the driveway seems close. Um, can you bring up the other? I just want to clarify one thing with the, the yellow line is that's not the entire lot. Okay. Which is important yeah. for the yeah. right. frame up. Now, I, I, I'm, you know, so this. The, 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 I, okay. Just clarify one thing. Um, the the nearest place on that side yard is back here, and we're back over 25 feet in the front. So right about here would be 25 feet. This is probably like eight 
right? So this is uh, somewhere in between? It's, it's, I believe it's uh, 10 to 11 feet at the back edge. Okay. And that's still, you know, big, like you were saying, big pile of snow here. Yeah, that's tight. Yeah. Um, as far as the parking goes, you know, th this whole spot, you know, was proposed you know, by the town, you know, only <coughs> bought this spot, I don't know, it was 15 years ago, or something like that. And I imagine the town was going to just expand the parking lot. So, you know, as far as all the parking here, where you're, you're, you're hearing from people live on Temple Street and me, this is my, this is my back. And, and as a sign of, this is Parker here, and this is Parker here. Okay, so this doesn't abut any neighbors. You, you guys realize yeah. that? Yeah. So, you know, me being a layperson, I, I, I you know, I'd request redrawing the plans. Potentially think about moving these spaces just to back here. Okay, maybe making the playground slightly smaller in order to suffice. Because I think that would greatly make, you know, me happier and, and all the neighbors here. And, 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 and you it's may right. have thought about that. Obviously, we, we would prefer, you know, less spots. <laughs> the, the fewer spots, the better. Um, but that's um, you know, something that I would uh, request. Can, can, I ask, can I ask sure. you something? Less spots, if that means parking, uh, more parking on the street. Personally, for me, yeah, it, there's always people on the right. somewhere, so it doesn't that doesn't bother me personally. I mean, I'm sure other people have to take that. No, I asked you, so I, yeah. I, I you know, there's always people yeah. on the street. So whether it's a church on Sunday, it's the middle school every other you know, week. One thing we talked about when Dr. Littleton gave us the presentation was the potential to, um, you know, th they, they, they govern when the classes start and end, and potentially, you know, managing it so there isn't the overlap. You know, so like one class ends at, you know, 1 and the next class doesn't start at 110, maybe it starts at 120, so they can avoid the overlap. The reason I bring that up, if that's possible to consider in the parking study. Saying, hey, the max is 39, but if you could avoid the overlap, then maybe the max is, you know, five, six. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bummed. No, no. You were great. Okay. Well, I'm curious, when was that presentation? Uh, the beginning of the month? It was a meeting a week or two ago between the applicant and some of the neighbors. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Thank you. I mean, as far as, you know, putting a fence there, you know, that, that's great state and greatly appreciated. I mean, we discussed a lot about berms and vegetation. Um, you know, obviously that, that, that would be ideal. You know, what, what, whether we're talking about covering, the, like, the, the, the wall here for, for you know, 176 or vegetation here, you know, that, that, that would all be greatly appreciated. I mean, the goal for me, and, and I think most of the neighbors now, is, you know, we don't want it to look so commercial. Right, so, you know, if it was a couple spots out here or, or more parking in the back, just to just make it more look residential, you know, that, that's, you know, that, that, that's what we're talking about, or that's my, so. Um, I think that's all I have. Well, one question is, they, they say no sand. Can you salt on this driveway? No. So no salt or sand? No. Just got a I don't want to, you don't want to fill that void space. Yeah, I didn't know if salt melted or... Mm -hmm. so, okay, thank you. Thank you. I see a hand up. You can't see the number. 19. 19? 19. 19. Hi, I'm Susan Cockle. I live right across the street um, at 195 Summer Avenue. Um, comments came up earlier about a three to four class schedule today, which I hadn't heard about with 15 minute intervals. And I was glad to hear that you want to do a parking impact analysis. I think that's very important. My concern, and I don't know if this is the right meeting, but living on Summer Avenue, I can imagine what that's going to do to the traffic and safety on Summer Avenue. Um, and I agree. I think parking on the street is not a great idea because I think the street <coughs> is very narrow. If you try to have two cars going down at the same time <coughs> with parking, it's almost impossible. So that's my comment. It's mostly from a safety. We talked about drainage. We talked about a lot of other things, but safety is my biggest concern. Great. Thank you. Ma'am? Hi, I'm number 
Can um, I ask you to pull up um, from the view from the oh, north? Yeah, I'm sorry. Name. Oh, Did I'm sorry. Anne Godwin, 189, somewhere up, Thank you. across the street. Um, can you bring up the view from the um, east side, looking at the property? May I use your pointer, please? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Did you want the site plan? Oh, uh, the site plan, please. <coughs> Is it the, the yeah, first yeah. cover page? Do you know which one that is, one? Mark? Is that the one you're looking I'm, for? I'm not sure. To no, it's, it's the view looking down the current driveway right now. The west From, side? Um, it's the east side. So Jerry's on the south. 176 is on the north. And there it is. I'm sorry, it's just one five. East, right here. This, here. Okay. You don't have a straight on view of that? Okay. This one? Can you go just back? Just down one. Go down one, James. There. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Number so one. this is um, the east side of the property. This is um, I'm from the summer Ave view in my view. So I just want to point out that the um, the new building, the bulk and size of it, um, obliterate half the view of the barn. Um, also, the copious parking and the um, the overcrowded view from the buildings and the parking, um, the site looks completely congested. And that I also am concerned about the parking, if we can try to minimize it so that there's some green space in front because it's pretty minimal right now. I also request that um, the signage, the monument, um, freestanding monument sign for criteria, is very close to the sidewalk. And to maintain the integrity of kind of keeping it looking residential, I requested that we pull back in maybe towards the main house. Um, the other things I wanted to just note were a few um, architectural concerns that we had. Um, the new building needs to aesthetically align with the original home. Um, for instance, um, do you mind? Oh, actually, that's, that's good. Um, like the brackets. And these are just general, I just want to get for the record. The brackets on the roof, if they can be carried over to the roof line on the new building. Um, the windows on the new building request if they could be trimmed out to match the original home. So it looks less industrial looking. Um, we ask that the use of the materials for the windows and fabric should be consistent with the neighborhood. Um, we talked about using composite clapboard on this new building. Um, and I know that you try to use more efficient materials, but um, we want to try to keep it looking, keeping, respecting the original house and trying to keep that look carried over to the new building. Um, I also am concerned about um, the fixed aluminum storefront and the connector. <coughs> um, it's hard to really see what that's going to look like, but it looks pretty industrial to me. Moving over, same thing on the entrance to the main new building. Um, the aluminum brick entry system, um, it's like a storefront entry. And the canopy is just straight across flat and um, not consistent with the style of the original house. Um, and that's it. Thanks. <coughs> Mr. Hanson, can I keep that on? One of you, completely respectful of, of uh, everybody from the neighborhood here, but we would ask that we, that we keep the uh, future comments to within the scope that you set forth. That's again. good. Yep. Thank you. Any other <coughs> comments from the public? Uh, number 16, meet you by a second, George. Hi, my name is Stu Leslie. I'm uh, 51 Temple Street. I'm sort of the, uh, I think we have the, the site coming I guess I'd be to the uh, south and east, um, of course not directly in line with the parking lot, but um, I would still get this, the same uh, uh, sweep of the headlights. And the, the previous comment about you know moving the parking, the uh, I guess the north of the lot where you've got you know, fewer impacts on neighbors. <coughs> um, you know, there's already a school parking lot up there. Uh, the loss of vegetation would really not affect. Uh, anyone but, but folks on, on this locus. Um, 
So the, you know, it, it didn't need to be a T, but instead an L, uh, heading north rather than you know, the T that goes south as well. So that would uh, certainly improve the impacts on the neighborhood. Um, my other question is what the what the need for I think it was, it was wall lighting on the playground would be. Um, the, the, the need for illuminated play, uh, neving, I don't, I don't, it's not obvious to me why that would be uh, necessary. Uh, rather than safety, it seems to create a uh, attraction to play on that. Um, um, and it seems like an unnecessary light source uh, that sort of <coughs> adds to the ambient light, uh, which is concerning. I also just want to make sure that the times are at 9 o'clock or so, so it's not going to. <coughs> happened at the same time as Parker Middle School. Um, just, that would be a disaster. Uh, uh, yeah, Thank you. George? Uh, George Gozufis, I'm Associate CDC member. I was hoping I could stand up. I have uh, two comments on the bulk and height category. So, one aspect that contributes to the bulk is the number of classrooms, and I counted four classrooms, about three, so obviously there is an explanation that should be uh, explained. And the other comment is about um, borderline on the height issue. Uh, we heard that the mountain foundation, foundation problems, uh, the existing barn, and I'm just looking at this study from the functionality standpoint of where the playground is and where the barn is. Uh, I'm wondering if there is a way to begin to relocate the playground and the barn so that the barn finds a new foundation, gets moved to a more prominent location, like perhaps where the playground is, and potentially move to, you know, to a better, more visible uh, Location from the state. So the previous comment is probably on the character and not on the scope of this uh, committee. However, we need to combine uh, to look at what is there today and what will be there in the future on the bulk aspect. Far now it's too close to the building. So it is an opportunity if the foundation is discovered to be a seat or curated or it's no good uh, compacted earth or what have you. So actually, that is a good question. Um, four classrooms, but I think you described three. Sure. Sessions. If you if you bring up the yeah. uh, plan that has the enlarged school first and <laughs> second floor, that, perfect, right there. So there there are in fact four classrooms, um, which gives us maximum flexibility. The first floor there on either side of the center corridor. Um, and they are limited by Department of Education has a ratio of the number of square feet to the number of kids in the room. And so this allows us um, a, a sort of a maximum amount of flexibility with the getting being able to get the 8 to 12 kids in a room. We need rooms of this size. And then upstairs we have a dividing wall between the two adjacent classrooms and that allows us to have a 16 uh, child group if we were going to have one. That the, uh, this, this, one of these spaces is actually going to be our gross motor room which um, means that it's got tricycles and wheel toys and that sort of thing, more active play. And so typically we will have classes going on in room in one, two, and three. This is at the maximum. This doesn't happen all day long. This doesn't happen every session. Um, and then the fourth classroom is the gross motor. So the kids will move over there, do that more active play inside uh, on a day like today. Uh, and we also, so we're using three rooms at the same time, three sessions, but we need this fourth room to be able to do these big toys uh, at, in the same space. And then it does give us the possibility of that larger group space for those few sessions a week that might have more kids. Thank you. George, you have a follow-up? Uh, I understand uh, that's not meant to be a doubt, but we build something and there may be another owner that comes 
in the future who looks at this and says, oh, I can have four classrooms. And I totally understand what you're saying from a functional, operational standpoint. Because what, what we build is what, you know, what stands in the ground. And granted, you will be the owner and the operator. However, when we do the parking calculations, we look at park and parking. We're asking for this site <coughs> to be permitted for this building for this use. This is this is going to be an educational use, and uh, we cannot predict that in the future it's going to turn into something else. Nor that the approvals that we hope to gain could be applied to another use, uh, another operation, uh, other than what we do on this site. So but we did include in the parking plan that, that we gave you, it has four classrooms to deal with that concern. So that at the max use, that, that point we talked about earlier, maxing out the requirements. So it would accommodate four independent classrooms, but we only use three with a gross quota. Thank you. And I think you also know that the, the, the bulk and height of the building <coughs> well within the zoning by water law. Law coverage of right. What other questions do we have? <coughs> yeah. um, Kelly Corwin, 199 Summer Avenue. Um, I have um, two points. Um, my first point is about the outdoor playground. Um, so my understanding is this is an institution for um, children receiving early intervention, which is zero to three. Um, <coughs> so as I think about my kids growing up and really being an outside playground, that really gets you from like, 18 months to three. Um, so the area allotted seems really large, and I would um, like to understand what the regulation is um, and how we might be able to shrink that um, area. Well, the, the size of the playground is actually dictated by Department of <coughs> Education ratios, that we have to have so many square feet of outdoor play space for kids that we would have out on the on the playground at the same time. So that's, that's so a requirement. Think, um, so that would, that's very helpful. Thank you. Um, I think if we can incorporate that into the, um, the flow of students with the traffic study, I think that would be helpful too, because I'm wondering if you're um, 75 square foot per student, I think is um, my understanding. 35. 35. Um, the requirement, you might be going at the max utilization rather than uh, something that might be the typical utilization. So I'd ask you to consider um, that typical utilization and potentially shrink that. Um, my other comment about the playground is, um, and it relates to the, the coming and going parking situation, is that. Um, parents of young children um, find a lot of um, social um, joy out of talking to other parents in the same situation. And I have a um, daughter who's now 15, um, but received early intervention services because she was premature, and it's a very, very difficult thing to go through, excuse me. Um, and when you're in that situation, you want to bond with people. So I would imagine um, that people who are in that situation are dealing with children that have special needs, mm -hmm. they're going to be hanging out um, longer than they would just to come and go, just what's going on, what other services we're doing, what activities, what new toys. And so I think that should also be factored into the time study because look at the activity of the um, providers um, there. I think my last point I'd like to make is um, obviously Criterion is in the business of um, loving children. And I think um, Criterion is using a loophole in the Dover Amendment to bypass a can. traffic study. And if they love children, we're not, they should do a not able study. to discuss such topics. That's out of the bounds of so. And thank you. For <coughs> Sir? Hi. Uh, Robert Corwin, one of the summer. Um, in discussions with an architect friend of mine, I showed him the plans, and he showed them to a code a cold consultant of his. And a question arose about how the um, upper classrooms meet the code, as he understood it, the requirement of being direct access at ground level for children under three? I'm not sure. I just have a question. Code guy here next time. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Well, th wouldn't that be something uh, the building inspector would be? It would probably be something that would need to come out through the issuance of the helpful. building permit and things of that sort. It's not necessarily specific to the site itself. It's okay. more to within, inside the building. Yeah. So that would all be worked out, and mm -hmm. the building inspector <coughs> would ensure that the proper regulations are in place. Is that not something that they might be able to address? 
that's not well, not here. We, we don't get a building permit if we don't comply with the building code. If we do comply with the code, we comply with the zoning bylaw. Sure. We're entitled to a permit. If we have other necessary approvals. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's independently. Uh, okay. Yep. I didn't know where where this falls. Yeah. Yep. No. If there's multiple steps that happen after this, it would fall into one of those. Appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. What other questions do we have? I was number 19. I wanted to ask. Yeah, I know. I just want to make sure anybody who has not spoken, okay, we'll come back to you, ma'am. Okay. Ten. Mary Ellen O'Neill, 125 Summer Avenue. Um, I know that Jesse pointed out some um, need for clarification on the memo from Maxwell Architects dated today. Um, I think that does need to be clarified. Uh, there does seem to be overlap. There's sessions. There's um, <coughs> sessions from 12 to 1.30, then there's sessions 12.30 to 2, in terms of trying to figure out what all the, you know, the travel patterns and the parking uh, needs will be. Um, and so what's the difference between groups and how many, you know, uh, children are actually there at the same time? Uh, I do want to ask that um, going forward, uh, in the discussions and material is shared um, among everyone. I don't understand why there would be a confidential memo. Um, this is a public hearing, this is a public process. The, the, we, are, we are citizens. And while I appreciate that you are restricted as a body of town government from discussing certain options, I don't see that you have any right to tell us what, or what we can or can't say in a public meeting. You may not be able to discuss it, we can say it. So, thank you. Thank you. Sir? Uh, yeah, Bob Salter, 247 Summer Avenue. Um, I want to just bring up what was brought up in the beginning by Mr. Weston uh, and his comment about on-street parking, okay, <coughs> where he said there was a nursery school and church parking. Well, the only time there's church parking is on Sunday, okay? And there is a middle school that has traffic all day long during the week. So church parking on Sunday does not really impact the school traffic that occurs during the week. And what I would say is, really, there's no room for any on-street parking during the week from a safety standpoint, OK? It wouldn't, it wouldn't really be safe to have consistent parking on the street in that area, okay? And as far as the nursery school goes, as far as I know, there's no on-street parking due, uh, due to the nursery school um, in that area. I, I used to park on the street every day to pick up my, child, my, my what, three what, child, children that went to um, Sawyer Nursery School. And what school. time so, was that? Um, I, uh, midday, yeah, and early in the morning and then And, and, and did then, you think uh, that was safe 11. when Parker was going in and out uh, where where they were dropping all their kids Parker off wasn't and coming going in and out at the same time. My point of bringing it bringing it up is that there's a trade off here. It seems to me between um, providing more parking on on site, which eliminates more screaming um, of the neighbors and um, has a, a bigger impact on on the the site um, disruption of the site versus potentially, we'll find out when we get the numbers, of uh, uh, potentially minimizing that, that um, on-site disturbance in, with the possibility, the potential of having um, some on-street parking. And, and, and the reason why I brought it up is, I, from my understanding, from being in that neighborhood um, sometimes, I, I don't live in that neighborhood, but it's a neighborhood that I understand um, does have on-street parking, um, not all the time, I don't think, but from time to time. So, uh, well, I, 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 I would, could, could I just finish? I, I think that safety has to be an overriding issue here. I, I don't think it's really safe for um, fire trucks to have to pass park cars that are on that street. It's, it's not wide enough. Uh, the street itself is not designed for a business. And so uh, you have to consider that. Number 18? I'm sorry. Ma'am? Oh, it's number 19. Oh. <laughs> um, someone had brought up earlier that in order for a fire truck to get out, it would have to 
back down the street. Mm -hmm. Did I understand that correctly and not be able to turn around? What happens if there's like an ambulance in front of the fire truck and there's an emergency and they have to rush someone to the hospital? Does the fire truck then have to back out of the street and the ambulance have to come? And that seems like a safety issue to me. They can't turn around and <coughs> rush someone to a hospital for an emergency situation. I think we need to figure things like that out. Worst case situation. You yeah. do have a memo from the fire chief. Okay. So the fire chief has reviewed the yep. site plan and page 32 on the desk packet. He's in agreement with the current layout. Yep. Will satisfy the needs of. Yep. It's in the packet. <laughs> Sir, Frank right, Park Ludo, one five somewhere. One of you guys have concerns about the lights, the screen. Um, I'm sorry. What your number? Nineteen. We just had 19. 19. So we have two 19s? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. Oh. 195 somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Sorry. and Mrs. 19. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, two questions or concerns. The first one is the, the light screen and the headlights at night shining and you want to suggest how to try to reduce some of that impact. What about the people across the street? How do you how do you lessen that impact from all the headlights shining in the front windows and through the front doors? Any advice? No. Second, that lot is going to be used all the time, seven days a week, unless there's a gate going to be put. Because you hear the parking, the, when the university <coughs> church has events, they're going to pull right in there, unless you're going to tow. But it's, if you build it, they will come. They're going to fill it up. It'll, it'll look like a shopping mall. Sunday, Saturday nights, they have concerts. Half the least resistance right in there. How will that be addressed? It might be worthwhile to have a discussion with the church. <laughs> Same. Yeah. The same with the middle school. Is there, um, on that point, is, is there a fence along the back of the lot between the parking lot, between what will be the two parking lots? There's, yes, there's, there's a, a fence. Chain, uh, yeah, there's there is an now. existing fence. It's a chain link. Chain link fence. Six foot? Mm -hmm. right. Yes. yes. Are black? Yeah. <laughs> it does. It does. Just kidding. <laughs> George? Mr. Chairman, if, if the rest of the, if the public has uh, finished making their comments, I, I just want to make one quick thing uh, before I forget it. It may uh, help with something. Uh, if a couple of residents were talking about parking and trying to relocate it in the issue of the playground. And I just throw this out as a suggestion, depending on really how many spaces I've determined that they do need. If you turn the playground 90 degrees, um, you can wrap that uh, part of the half that T around the other side of the parking area so that you have a center aisle with parking on each side. And you could probably eliminate most, if not all, of the bottom part, part of the T. Uh, it gives you more sto snow storage area, uh, reduces part of your impervious. It, it's something that it may work, it may not, I don't know. I just want to throw that out based on comments that I've heard so far. The, what, what Dr. Littleton was saying was we were trying to stay further out of the side yard setback with the playground, but if that were agreeable to this board, um, we could look at turning that uh, playground 90 degrees and double loading the parking on this north side. I think that would address quite a few of the concerns that have been raised. May I comment on that? Art, Please. Art Krieger. Um, 
that would also, depending on how many spa spaces you got there, <coughs> might enable them to eliminate some of the spaces in the straight part of the driveway. Handicapped would need to stay there and some others would need to stay there, but if enough spaces went in the back, then maybe the driveway can move away from that plot line. So the, the, the driveway uh, width is basically constrained by the fire chief and, and safety department. So as long as we've got the uh, heading parking spaces of uh, statutory size. If, if they're hit, they have to be head in. Realistically, yes. That be revisited with the fire chief to move it over. I mean, that seems like a lot of space between the driveway and the house. Even if you, if you, you split the difference, help move it over. I can add a little bit to that. At the at the site entrance is two town trees, one right there, one right there. Those have to stay. For me personally, that's not the problem. It's it's more yeah. the the rest of the you know the, the big lawn between the house and the addition and the driveway. But I'm just saying to relocate that drive entrance, we can't take down a healthy right. town tree without a town tree. Am I missing what he's saying? I don't think he's saying to move the entrance. I think oh. he's just saying to angle it in a little bit quicker. Yes, you can. Push it closer. So, Jack, where, where, the park, where the cars are parked, put them towards the house. There is also a grade change between the foundation of the barn. And so we, it is, we are trying to mediate between the um, the foundation and the existing height of the barn uh, and get around it. It's already pretty tight there, but we can revisit the site plan with some of the information that we've gained this evening and, and see if there are accommodations we can make. And if we moved it closer in this area, I might have to design another ramp like we did at the, the entrance. Yeah. So instead of just having a straight second, walk yeah. in with a ramp, I need another um, switchback ramp. <coughs> Okay. And, and we believe that front entrance is as much stroller based as it is wheelchair based. Mm -hmm. Although it does meet the code and it is on the money for the uh, required slope of that ramp up to the building. Okay. Yeah, I propose, I don't know if I saw this back, but if a committee or a handful of neighbors could sit and kick around ideas. I mean, that's kind of what we're doing well, now anyway. But yeah, I think we got, I mean, the town engineer's idea. I think is excellent and I think it could address a lot of the concerns that have been raised but we probably need to see it and review it uh, review an updated set of drawings but Virginia I saw you had a question uh, Virginia Adams, uh, speaking as an individual not as a member of any commission um, I had a concern about the uh, elevation of the new proposed uh, school section <coughs> is there any way excuse me that the roof might be lowered a little bit to, uh, to reduce the massing of it and also are there going to be any um, foundation plantings around the structure to soften it thank you <coughs> and the, the roof line we comply with the height uh, criteria and I don't I don't think we want to get into that proceeding right uh, I would I would agree and I think often when you start reducing the roof line it if it's not in agreement with the other structures it can start looking awkward um, I'm sorry what was the other question plantings. plantings oh yeah plantings any comment on that plantings uh, Bob has said that plantings will plant almost anything that uh, neighbors want that doesn't jeopardize any other piece parts of the site okay okay very open Please. I just want to make sure I have one more comment before it's yeah. 1030. It can be now or it can be. No, go ahead right now. Yeah. Um, Art Krieger. Um, snow storage, just one more uh, word on that. I heard the possibility of putting it out in the front on the street. That would be pretty unsightly. For <coughs> Not on the street, but in the front. front yeah, mm -hmm. I would agree. Nothing. Yep. That would be pretty unsightly. Mr. Tully, you're looking like you didn't hear that, but I. I think that is what mm. I heard. Okay, I'm yeah, no, I, I did hear that. Yeah, yeah. I did hear Another that. possibility was putting it in between the new ginkgos along the right side of the driveway. Um, plow operators are highly skilled with these exactly <laughs> instruments, and, and you know when you get when you get branches you know, five feet off the ground and ginkgos however many feet apart, it's a little, a little tough to use that for massive snow storage. Um, snow storage, it seems to me, should go in the back if the parking lot is reduced. All these issues again are, are connected. Um, 
The other thing about parking is I would ask the board to reframe the information that you're looking for from the applicant. We heard about the maximum number, and we're candid in saying that the statistical maximum, they, if that's not typical, I think Mr. Margolin or, or maybe Mr. Mitchell said, uh, they could do this with some number of fewer spaces. Um, I guess I would turn it around because if Ken and I agree on anything, I think it's that the Dover Amendment requires accommodation between the town interest and neighborhood interest on one hand and the use. And so the question to me is what's, if they manage the, the time of the sessions, somebody suggested to reduce overlap. If they manage the time of the sessions uh, and you get good information on what part-time, full-time staff or when, et cetera, the question is what's the minimum number of parking spaces? Not, not even what they would call typical, but what's the minimum they need to run their program? I'm not saying cut that number to the bone, but there's no flexibility. But, but the starting point, it seems to me, if you're going in a residential neighborhood, it's how few spaces can you live with and run your program as you want to run it. And, and let's see what that number is with, with the explanation when those people are there. I would ask that that be the standard. Hmm. And I, we don't acknowledge that that's the standard, but we will try to give you the information you want on that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. So and, and, and on that point, um, whether that's the standard or not, I, and I'm going to say it again because I said it before, but there's, there's a circle here, which is the minimum that you have to operate, the safe operation, the typical operation, and, th and what you think you need to accommodate everything on site. And maybe, and I'm, and I'm hoping that the answer is somewhere um, uh, in between um, all those, or, or that can at least at least we can understand what all those are with the information. Right, and we, want to, we want to make the memo bullet point very, yeah. very easy to understand. Yeah. We get that. I, and, and I'm sure you understand flexibility comes from trust, too. Yeah. You know, uh, so yeah, absolutely. It's designed to, by right, no. sometimes more demanding than, than reasonable accommodations. Yeah. I, I didn't mean minimum by pushing everybody out to the street. I understand right. safety. Yes. Yeah. The minimum that they need to accommodate the people for the for use. All right, so it's 1028, and I'm going to live by my word because I don't think even if we went another hour, we'd be able to wrap this up. Um, so we'll continue the public hearing uh, to a future date. I think there's a number of things <coughs> that we have requested, and I, I want to thank all of you. You've been very agreeable to this conversation, listening to the concerns of the neighbors and of the board. So thank you for that. Um, I'm still going to interrupt. We yeah, need to know what day. We were going yes. to get to your packing immediately, uh, or very promptly, but you know there's a a 60-day deadline within which the CPDC is supposed to act. Uh, <coughs> failing that or our agreement, we can apply for a building permit. My understanding is the next scheduled meeting is January 12th. Is that correct? That's right. Um, and we would agree to that, correct? Not me. We would agree to come to that meeting, but at that point, we would not agree to extend the 60 days. The 60 days uh, in 60 days from the date that the town planner uh, certified the plans as complete. Mm -hmm. That 60 days ends on January 6th. So January 12th is four business days beyond that. We're fine with that. But we would ask and expect that we be done on the 12th. We'll stay till 4 in the morning if necessary. But that's we're, we're agreeing to extend the 60 days to January 12th, but I think we've got to be done then. Thank you. Do you want to? If you could just give us something handwritten, even that acknowledges that, that you'd be willing to go along with I, that. I, well, I, I put in the record now, and I'll, I'll get it to you tomorrow, uh, to Mr. Hanson by email. Do I have your, your email address, uh, Mr. Hanson? Uh, you probably don't, but you can. Right. You can I think you can just send it to staff, staff and yeah. then we can, okay, we can just attach a letter. You, 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 there'll be no change in that position between now and yeah, tomorrow so or late morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, but but we do. Expect us to be done then, and I say we'll stay as late as it takes. Well, that's quite a. Are we comfortable with that? Um, that's a little concerning. Mr. Hanson, the, the 60 days is, is set forth in the zoning bylaw. Yeah, you know, I understand. You know. There's also, I mean, there's been a revision to the bylaw as a result of uh, a comprehensive review that's been submitted to the Attorney General's office that the new statute that once approved and I think would be retroactive to the date that the public hearing was publicized right. would be 45 days from the date that this public hearing ends. 
but that's not the case now. So uh, we, we will sure. agree to extend the, the 60 day period to January 12th. Really, there's no reason why we can't be done. Yeah, I don't here. disagree. I just don't want to lock us into something well, and well, I, I however he's agreeing to that extension sure. so we I, I guess um, he could not agree to an extension in, in which point. case um, mm -hmm. we have um, the the possibility of of some changed timelines perhaps yeah. um, uh, uh, um, that go along with the with the new zoning or we um, schedule a meeting uh, before the right. um, before the 60 days ends. I mean, I think those are our two, really our, our our two choices, unless I have it wrong. Well, that's uh, true. That, that's true. I mean, yep. we come obviously. If you want to schedule a, a, another meeting before the, the sixth and then the twelfth, if necessary, that's what that's fine. Would you guys prefer that? Yeah. <laughs> I, w I would like to see this resolved appropriately. The uh, other than that, I have no. I mean, I can I can meet next Monday. I I don't believe that the rest of the board can. I think in order for us to properly schedule the meeting, we need to have something in writing. So I just um, scribbled something up that is basically says I so and so agree on behalf of Criterion to extend the 60 days for the writings on the bylaw under site plan review with a signature. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. you agree to extend it. It says it's over here as well. I didn't put it, it till. Should, it should have. Yeah, yeah. That's, that should doesn't. Be if if you okay. want, you put it. We would definitely yeah. need something in writing. Yeah. So. Fill in the yeah. appropriate words. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we want to go, sort of summarize the outstanding? Yeah, we should definitely do that. Yeah. Yeah. I can meet the fifteen. I agree. Excuse me. I have a question. How, how can you agree to something legal like that without consulting town council and without having complete um, public input yet? How can you agree to make a decision by a certain date? I, I don't understand. And and when he's we are required. I, I'm confused. We we're required um, uh, under the state zoning code to act on the act on the um, the application within 60 days. So um, so we have um, we have a choice here. Um, our next meeting is not scheduled until after that 60 days due to the holidays in our meeting schedule. So we have a choice here. Um, we could either try and pull together um, a, a quorum for another meeting within that 60 days, or agree, um, you know, they've they've agreed to extend the date um, uh, for some time period so that we can um, so we can resolve it um, uh, at our next scheduled meeting. And those are the two choices that we have. Um, point, point of sure. I, I didn't hear Mr. Margolin say. They'll extend until January, whatever. If you agree now that that will be the last night, I heard him say he expects that will be the last night. Meaning, I suppose he may not consent to a further extension. But I don't think you need you need to, and I don't think you legally can agree now to close it next time. You'll be faced with a choice next time about whether to stop, you know, whether to close it down, or whether if you. you know, I don't. Th I don't think you're at the decision point yet. He's he's agreed to extend, so let's extend. But I, 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 Mr. With respect to Mr. Krieger, you shouldn't speak for me. What I'm agreeing to is to extend to January 12th, but not beyond January 12th. I can't control what right. you gentlemen yeah. do, but that's yeah, right. well, yeah. Right. That's yeah. 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 Much, yeah. As, much as Ken likes to recast and disagree with everything you <laughs> say, that is what I said. Yes. <laughs> no, we we understood. <laughs> yes, we're all in agreement. Yeah. So, um, if we are unable to resolve it by January 12th, they are in, they are legally entitled to apply for a building permit. Yeah. On the, if on they the existing plan. If they don't extend again, depending on the new statute and the effect of that. Yeah. Right. And, and we're, just to, to repeat, we are delighted to meet in addition before January 6th. I mean, you know, if this uh, board can pull together a 12. special Tell meeting me. night, we'd yeah. like to do that. Yeah, that, that's yeah. typically hard, f hard for, uh, I mean, we, we're, we're down a member and plus, <coughs> you know, um, we couldn't even get, you know, we couldn't get the fourth one here. So, it's so tough I think to get a quorum. we are. So let's do this. Let's review the outstanding items that we 
want to ideally have added to the site plan or have the site plan revised to incorporate. So Jesse, can I look to you to kind of walk um, us through those? Between Gina and I, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah please. So the, so the um, site plan will be revised to, to address any um, changes to parking, which may come out of your parking demand study. Parking demand study for sure. And then adjustment to the site plan as a result of that parking demand study. And that adjustment could be alternatives. I mean, don't please don't be afraid of providing more than one choice. Um, any changes or updates to the snow storage areas? I'm sorry, what was that? Item? Snow storage. Snow storage. Snow storage. Thank you. <coughs> any adjustments to the landscaping? I guess that would actually be on the landscaping plan. Yep. Um, there was some discussion about the location of the monument sign, shifting that back towards the building away from the street. There was also discussion on the northern facade about the fenestration, the rear of the building. I think the lighting was okay, although there was a question about the um, <coughs> wall packs for illuminating the playground area. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, the timers that are tied to the operation of the lighting with dusk to dawn, the specific time of when those light, lights would be turned off. Would it be closed business? Yes. Yeah. Something that would indicate that. Okay. Uh, and the um, any and all updates to the drainage calcs um, and any adjustments there as a result of the um, to the drainage grading and utility plan. And adjustments. Um, I believe as part of that you'll be doing some additional test pits. Yeah. Um, will you be also incorporating any other comments related to the utilities, such as George's, um, the, the sewer yeah, I'll line? Address, I'll address all of George's comments. Yeah, Great. The, the water feed and so forth. What was that? The, the, where the split between the domestic and the safety uh, water is. I'll work that out with okay. George. I had an email to him we have conflicting discussions on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's our one conflict. <laughs> 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 and the gutter, gutter inlets. Gutter inlets. Yeah. And then are we going to see something about shifting that play area for the town engineers? Yeah, program? that probably falls into you know, revised parking, revised. Yeah. 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 But that, that's a good idea. Is that everything? Did you talk about adding in some uh, false windows on one of those sides? That was the, yep. yeah. the yeah. fenestration yeah. on the north of the side. We got that one in there. I didn't hear uh, that. Sorry. Yeah. I think there was a, we missed the request to, to get the trim to match. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the Consider it, yeah. The windows trimmed to match. Um, the brackets on the roof line. Brackets on the roof line. The um, fixed aluminum storefront and the storefront entry where the canopy doesn't match. Those are common. Right. No. Right. Understood. Yep. Consider. Along with the um, parking demands that I we can, I'm sure that'll be provided, but just a clear layout of the schedules, how many students are in each group or in each session, it just wasn't overly clear, just something no, that we, we get that. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to you with enough events to the staff to look at it say, does that seem to Perfect. match yeah. what the yeah. intent? Great. Right. 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 Right
get it to the point that you say, oh, we, yeah. that sounds mm -hmm. like what we want. So if the meeting is on the 12th, can we expect that like a week in advance? Oh, yes. Go ahead. First week of January? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It won't take that long. Sooner the better. Right, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I um, think that's it. Mr. Hanson, I, please. I, I think I should read this statement. Yeah. I'm signing so that everybody agrees that they've heard everything which is being given to the board. Uh, I, this is drafted by um, Ms. Delios with some additions by me, which are initially signed. So I, Kenneth Van Margo, and agree on behalf of Criterion to extend the 60 days, and then I put an asterisk, 60 days refers to. 60 days from the date the town certified site plan is complete uh, per the Reading Zoning Bylaw under site plan review in the words, <coughs> up to but not beyond January 12, 2015. And then I signed it. That's what I've been asked to sign. And that's what I'm getting. Okay. I, I, I have a question on that. Okay. Um, does that give the board time to make a decision with appropriate conditions? We all have to be done that night. I take it 60 days. Requires a decision. Yes. Yes. So you would need to make a decision with conditions that night. That's why we're willing to it's take a form yeah. 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 Well, then it's the fifth thing. <laughs> that that is typical for us to do it all in one night. I mean, uh, at the same night. Ma'am. Is there a discussion about the possibility of moving the barn or to um, adjusting the bulb to so it could be? completely visible from Summer Ave. That was discussed. It's okay. never been completely visible from Summer Ave. It's always been, if you look at the house, straight from the street, mm -hmm. that the house goes through the black door on the left-hand side. That's and not, that that's not okay. something we well, would uh, consider doing. We didn't change it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're constrained by the side guard side backs. Okay. Sir? I talked about a mechanism to uh, find the property owner to, to make it repair that uh, poor state design in the future if it fails. Uh, I don't know how that can be done. Uh, the question I have, I'm not sure if we have an answer for that. That's, uh, that's a part of the stormwater maintenance and operation plan. But I think he's looking it's for... $50,000 to do it over. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you uh, force him to fix it to it? You want to say, hey, that's it's a question for yeah. Yeah. There's got to be. What was that? Town engineer, the building inspector, can provide a George, response. I'm I can take that, yep. George. Or do you want to go ahead? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Chairman, the only Please. thing I can offer at this time is 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 two things. I guess is on some other sites we did have a uh, mechanism um, that. Uh, Help me, Gene. What do we call it? Some kind of financial mechanism yep. that would uh, go towards maintenance of the system. Yep. Uh, uh, the other thing that we'll have that no one knows about this right now, except myself, is that uh, well, a few other people that are in my position, that under the new MS4 permit, we're required to establish by bylaws for stormwaters that will have teeth in violations and fines. So truthfully, our, our true mechanism, short of anything else failing, is going to be the bylaw that we have to pass in a year and a half. Could, it, or it, it, correct me if I'm wrong. In essence, this is no different than any other stormwater system uh, across the, the, the town w in the sense that if maintenance doesn't happen and it fails, we have the same leverage, which is probably not a whole lot. We, um, we can we can ask it for us, but typically, um, for the most part, when it gets to one private property owner flooding out or causing damage to another private property owner, it's a civil suit. It's a private matter. I mean, the town can the town or city can in, in try as much enforcement as it, as it wants, but if that uh, individual property owner who's causing the problem doesn't want to cooperate. There's not much the town can do, right. but this bylaw actually will give us teeth that would, based on what we're hearing, the um, the EPA wants to how they want the bylaws to be drafted up. It's supposed to include fines for failure to comply. It's good to good to know. Okay. Joe Luffy, 167 Summer Avenue. I 
I don't think anybody understands that this porous pavement doesn't control the storm water. It allows all the oils and the gasoline and the grease and everything from the cars just to go into the into the water system, into the ground. There's no control. So he mentioned that there's no control, but it means that that oil and gas and grease from the cars just go into the groundwater system. So it's more important that they eliminate that porous design. Thank you. It's, gentlemen, it's, it's D, it's, as Jack has said several times, D, P approved. And the separation yep. of the groundwater table, the soil acts as a, a filter, and it's like a septic system. There's impurities that gets filtered out through the sand before it reaches the groundwater. Okay. So did you have another comment? Yes. I, I think uh, I think the idea of putting these uh, gutter inlets in is the halfway there. I think we should ask the chair uh, to include in it a contingency design, which would uh, capture the solids that, that come down the driveway. If the system fails, the runoff coming down, we need to capture those solids before it gets into the, the porous soil. So I think it's I think maybe we should ask for. Okay. All right. Well, we are at 1047, according to my watch. So um, I think we need a move to continue to the, is it the 12th? January 12th. January 12th. Move that the CPDC continue the public hearing for the site plan review at 186 Summer Avenue, Criterion Charlie in Richmond, until Monday, uh, January 12, 2015. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. At what time? At 7.30 p.m. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? All right. Thank you. Do we, um, are, are we done? You guys can be done. No, There's we're minutes, but we we're not doing minutes. <laughs> we have another motion. So move, move to adjourn. Second. Oh no, I can't. Uh, second. <laughs> All those in favor. Thank you. Sir. Nobody heard the last motion. So no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Oh, no. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank, thank you. you very much. Appreciate it.